is a mic check. This is a mic check. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the 30th of December, 2024. A little cold, a little rainy outside. I am exhausted. Obliterated, even. <laughs> Fabulously, insanely fucking tired. I don't have anything funny to say. <laughs> There's a small chance I'm getting sick. With all that said, this is Westside Tyler live. Holy shit, that's blown out. Look at look how bright this is. This is how tired I feel. <laughs> God damn, look at that fucking white ass screen. Holy shit, I've moonheaded myself. Give me a second, I've got to fix this. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, properties video every time it turns itself back on every time there that's a human color scheme it's a little dark but like god damn <laughs> maybe I'm just that pale okay 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 hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on give me just give me, hold on <clears throat> hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Westside Tyler Live. My name is Tyler Bell. You're watching the best goddamn arts, culture, and politics commentary live stream on YouTube. Lucky fucking you. Tonight we've got a great show for you. I'm going to be talking about Mentis Wave. I'm going to be talking about him... Uh, so saying something about Asmongold, I don't know, people re uh, requested it, and apparently I read the, in the video description that Asmongold is smarter than some economics professors, which is a, a stunning, a stunning claim to make, and I'm excited to get to it. We're also going to be talking about sovereign citizens. Um, I, I intend on doing a little bit of research, because they always quote, the, they quote laws and stuff, and I want to know what the fuck those laws mean. Also... I'm going to be talking to you guys, and I'm going to be hanging out, as we are doing right now. <clears throat> like I said at the stop, start of the show, my name is Tyler Bell. If you don't know, I am the host, writer, creator of the long-running horror and dark fiction podcast, The West Side Fairy Tales, which you can listen to free, online, everywhere that you get your podcast. If you want to learn more about me, the stuff that I make, the things that I create, because you're like, this motherfucker can't do shit. Who the fuck is he? I am. I am him. I am him. Okay? I'm the. If I was a country, I'd be the fucking Himalayas. <laughs> you can learn more about that at westsidefairytales.com westsidefairytales.com if you're out there and you're watching back through this later on down the stream down the line and you're coming back through and you're like who the fuck is who, what's going on what kind of craziness is this i want to talk to this guy i want to be a part of these conversations but fuck me it's three days past ten. it's 10 days it's a fortnight it's a video game 
past when he uh, launched this episode. I don't feel like he can catch up. You can by getting on our Discord and joining motherfucking Vodgas. We're talking about Vodgas. 24-7. 24-7. Vod gang, that's right. I've got people that listen to this podcast or this uh, live stream all across the world now, all across every time zone. I have fans in Antarctica. They are penguins. If penguins are in Antarctica, I can't remember if it's the Ant or the Arctic where they are, but wherever the penguins are, that's where you can also hear Westside Tyler live. And if you want to join the discussion, even if you're a penguin or if you're a psycho fucking orca sneaking around under the ice waiting for them to slip up, and you want to let them know you're coming, join the Discord. The invite code to the Discord is in the episode description. As always, pop in there, hang out with everybody, say hello, follow the rules or you'll get banned, um, and uh, consider joining in the creativity aspect of it. I have plenty of rooms, um, channels for people that make stuff. If you are if you like to draw, if you like to model things, um, if you like maps and minis and uh, tabletop RPGs, there are places for you on the Discord. So go ahead and check it out. Join VOD Gang today. <clears throat> also, if you like this channel and you want to keep it alive and use sick ass emojis, I am on YouTube only for the foreseeable future. And by foreseeable, I mean like I don't know, maybe till next month, maybe till next year. Uh, so we, if you if you want to, uh, you know, it, while I believe that emojis are a human right. YouTube doesn't agree with me, so if you want access to the uh, the cool ass channel specific emojis, consider joining the channel for just like a dollar or two dollars, whatever the fuck it is. It's super cheap, so if you want to use the emojis, you can do that. There's other tiers that will just make you more special looking in chat, but I don't do fucking anything. I don't do fucking shit for my goofs. That's why it's a goof. You're goofy for even doing it, but you're my goof, and you could be noof goof bootin if you join the channel. Send me a super chat if you enjoy it. If sne- sneak cheeks. Does a little sneak up and passes through. You can also donate to him using the uh, little tip thing, whatever the fuck. There you go. I hit it. With all that said, man, I'm going to try to hop into it tonight. Boy, howdy. I'm fucking exhausted. I am crazy tired. Crazy tired. Um, I got off stream last night at midnight. Um, I had to help my wife out with some stuff today, so we ended up driving start i had to get up again at like whatever 6 45 7 o'clock so i i basically didn't sleep almost at all drove over to lexington and then i was in lexington awake for like eight hours and then i came back with her and took like a nap on the way back and a nap um in the car i actually tried to find a parking lot to sleep in while i was there doing some stuff and i couldn't find one because fucking lexington is too goddamn sketchy uh, that's over now, but my slightly broken sleep schedule has f- turned my brain into mush, which is why it's such a good night to be talking about a really easy, uh, non-specific subject that no one ever gets fucking confused or angry about economics. Um, I'll, I'll be doing a breakdown of kind of like my version of economic theory or whatever, and just giving some like primer shit on it. I, I'm, I, I don't get too navel gazy. Don't worry. It's not going to get bogged down in definitions and stuff, but um, I'll talk about that a little bit here in a second. And before that, I'm going to go up, talk to everybody in chat and, uh, say hi. So if you're out there in chat, say hello, say what's up. Good to see you all here tonight. Um, do we have the first, oh, <clears throat> members go up, I think, uh, with the first comment when I scheduled the thing. Um, how, I do wonder how. Secret of a genius. I do watch him from time to time as I do Moist slash Penguinzo. Uh, I, I know it's Penguin Zero, but it's Penguinzo. That, that's just, it's Penguinzo. Just to check out the radical centrist's take on things. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, which I guess is probably why most people watch Asm and stuff. I, I, I've, like, the guy seems to have just like done a modeling shoot of just a series of reaction images to put on all of his thumbnails, which I respect the fuck out of. Um, and am... am I think I'm going to do it. Also, I don't know. I'm considering, because it is technically a gratuitous shitpost. I am considering using AI to make an AI Asmongold bot and then just ripping off every single one of his videos. Because I've realized when I look through some of his other stuff, like he gives like whatever bog standard commentary on shit. It doesn't really matter because... 
he it generally just kind of boils down to like, oh, wow, that's crazy. I agree. Or like, I can't believe this. This is ridiculous. I don't think his audience is like watching hard enough to really get it. And I feel like if I, uh, if I just like create Asmin Silver, right? And then I just do a little thing where it's just like his. And then I just, whatever video he's going to react to that day, I just steal it from the internet as he does and just put his little box down in the corner. I don't think anyone's going to know. I, I think you could get away with that for a while. As a matter of fact, somebody else, you could take that idea because it would be fucking hilarious to see him, like, if he got mad about it, if it actually got, like, huge. I think it would be funny. You got to rip off his Clips channels, too. So, like, all of his Clips channels just slightly change the names. I Like, those are, like, independent actors, and you might fuck with their money, but that's still fucking funny. Like, right? <laughs> Will your opinion stay the same if you, fucking, if you actually fuck with the bag? So, um, I don't know if anyone's out there and you know how to do it or like I could do it without like possibly getting myself demonetized or kicked off of YouTube. I kind of want to pursue it as a project. Um, uh, and if you end up doing it yourself, let me know. I'll fucking try to signal boost it as, as much as I can. <laughs> Cause it just, sounds, I was thinking about it and it just seems like it would be so unfathomably fucking easy, uh, to like do that. I want to see if you could. Because like I, like I watched other videos of his, like the one last night, and he just does like sit there. It just, I, you could definitely do it with Hassan, easy. Like just steal random YouTube videos, you know, that maybe people aren't even paying attention to, and just you don't even have to do an AI for Hassan. Just literally put Hassan reacts to thing, and then just have a little video of him down there eating, and I guarantee you the algo will fucking like rip it up, like it'll go all the way to the top. I wonder if that's possible. But either way, generic clickbait. Hopefully, Asmongold's defenders are more interesting than him. Oh, he's not an Asmongold defender. Is he not? Even more interesting. I'm going to screech Vodgang and eat myself into oblivion again. Thank you, Sidious. Oh, no. Servants of the light. Okay. Whew. Sid Crow, welcome. Welcome, welcome. New booth, Guten. I meant to put the actual, like, audio from there that that into it but i couldn't do it just do an ai of hassan's chair what a based idea tyler test wide kyler i don't know why but that just caused me psychological damage <laughs> it fucking hurt for some reason that was not a complex thing but that fucking got me you use Krita sometimes, right? Krita gang, Krita gang, Krita gang, Krita gang. I use I use Krita specifically to draw. I have access to Photoshop. I try drawing in Photoshop. Pain in the ass. Miserable fucking experience. I guess some people really enjoy it, but like Photoshop has too much other functionality to like. I don't know. I feel like it's really particularly good for drawing, right? And then Krita just Krita just works, man. Krita just works. And the whole painting aspect of Krita is basically like fucking perfect. So I love Krita. Channel full of AI rips of boring streamers. Like it's there. It's there for you. Someone else should do it. Like I actually, I don't, I have too much on my plate to actually do that. Someone else should just do it and see how much money you can make and see if like, if see if, see if people start changing their tune when they realize that like, you know, 150, $250,000 got stolen right out of their pocket. Because, like, unironically, like, by Asmongold's logic, you should just, like, literally just steal all of his Clips channel stuff. Like, if his Clips channel puts something out and it starts doing numbers, wait till they do it, download that video, and then run it through AI. And now it's yours. By his logic, he shouldn't be complaining at all. And then just re-upload it, right? With, like, a slightly different name than the original person. Like, that's ethical. That's, like, legal ethical. Asmongold supports that. Because first off, it's not up to Asmongold if he's upset. Like, fuck Asmongold, right? The artists don't matter. The important thing is whether or not the consumer likes it. So if, like, Asmongold's fan wants your AI version of Asmongold, then that's the best thing to do. And as a matter of fact, everybody should do it. If you're out there and you're just an Asmongold fan and you're like, well, I don't know. He wants you to do this. Like, if you're a kid... If you're like one of Asmongold's fans, I know this is crazy. If you're like 14, 15 years old, he knows that you exist and he thinks you're really cool. He just hasn't told you yet. And the one way to get his attention and like, he'll be like, wow, you know, like whatever. Maybe he'll be like a little upset or something, but he'll know your name and he'll think about you and you'll be real to him. You'll be real to Asmongold. You'll be real to him and you'll matter to him. If you create an AI clips channel of Asmongold and make it, he'll love you for it. He'll think about you every day. 
<laughs> Asmund Gold Diamond. <laughs> Asmund Gold's Clips channels don't have any right to that content. He agrees with you. You can steal content from Asmund Gold's Clip channels and run it through AI stuff and just remix it a little bit. It's, a, it's the same thing, all right? It doesn't matter how his Clips channels editors feel about things. Fuck them. You know what I mean? First off, they're, art, they're like, who cares about artists, okay? And they're like stealing his content anyway, right? Like if you think about it, you should be making that money. You should fucking burn all of his Clips artists. And steal their fucking content and upload it for yourself and make that money for yourself. Why not? The, the, you could have just had that idea already, all right? Like the work that they did, like editing stuff and clips ah, ugh, clip selecting and, and talking to each other and trying not to step on each other's feet and like trying to create a good like uh, creative atmosphere. Like, like the, the whole, fuck that. You are important to this because I mean, you are, that's money you're not making. And if you're not making that money, you could be making that money. And like Asmongold's like, he's been around long enough, right? You kind of got the vibe. You're basically Asmongold yourself. You're in his mind. You know how he's going to react. You're basically as good at what he does as he does, right? It's not that hard. So why not just take his head and put it in a little clip and then just start playing it over anything that he hasn't talked about yet? Or even better, just stuff that he has talked about like on stream and just upload it before um, he can as a clip. And then, then you can get those views because you deserve it, right? And Asmund Gold agrees with you because if you get the views, then you're correct. It's your, it's your IP as well. It's our IP when it really comes down to it. It's the people's intellectual property, isn't it? I mean, you're a fan. And if you're a, if you're a fan, if you love the content, like you wouldn't do anything. It's not like wrong. You know what I mean? Like it's not, that's not wrong. It's cool that you're doing it. Like other people will love it and like really just like post like, hey, if you guys love this, I've got three more clips channels. Get out there, you know, make your money. Let Asmund Gold know you exist. Even if you think that I'm shit talking, he'll know that you're real. He'll think about you. He'll be like, wow, man, this, this person, this kid, this guy, ooh, I know him by name. He'll know you by name. Maybe he'll even get like upset with you enough to like find out like your like address and stuff and he'll like know what your face looks like and then you're real to him. You'll be real. It's almost like your friends, like your work acquaintances. Like you don't feel like he knows you. You know, like have you ever talked to him and like he didn't like pay enough attention to you? Now he will. Now he will pay all kinds of attention to you. You'll be real to him if you do this. You'll be real to him. <laughs> Fuck Hillary Clinton. When I go and they go low, I go lower. You don't know where the bottom is. <laughs> and on the and on that day the west side psychological warfare department was formed three weeks later a new nation was formed <laughs> peak parasocial <laughs> we're all cups in his gooner room <laughs> it'd be funny if you sample jasmine gold's voice and use the ai to make him say actual takes it wouldn't be hard like that, that already exists. And he already says stuff like really, <laughs> if you just program the algorithm to know like where conversational stop points are, you, you could probably, cause he like, if you watch him, he'll just let it go. He's, he's XQC Hassan mode. Like he turns it on and he's <laughs> zoned out just thinking about gooning. So like, yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Ooh, videos playing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck it. And eventually, like, maybe my pause. Like, yeah, I think I agree with that. Okay, that makes sense. Like, you can just jam that in there. You don't think you can because you're like, well, it wouldn't make sense, would it? No. The brain. It's a. Uh, oh, I I learned this word the other day. Paradolic. Paradolic. I can't remember if that's actually how you say it. But like, basically, you hit your brain. Especially if you're like a fucking like a little gooner kid that fucking watches Asmund Gold. Your brain will put together the fucking pattern recognition and just be like, okay, I think this makes sense. Yeah, right? Like, yeah, okay, this is strange. <laughs> but Tyler, what about the copyright strikes they will cry about when this happens? <laughs> Seems like it might change the conversation that they've been having before, huh? 
Excited to view a stream live again. Hope you're well. Thank you, Diana. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Pareidolia. Pareidolia. Hard word to say. Thank you, Doc. You know what's better than one channel? <laughs> Three channels. <laughs> you know what? Better than one Adam and Gold channel. Three Adam and Gold channel. Ha, ha, ha. He was angling hard for a kick deal after the first wave of deals got signed. I wouldn't be surprised. Kick is just like, I cannot have to get... I, I could, somehow, less rules. It, it, like, it's insane that people are like, man, I feel like I can't get away with enough stuff on YouTube. I'm like, I see people on here. Like, literally just don't say slurs. Literally don't say slurs. Even if you, like, desperately, like, that's part of your content because you're fucking Steven Crowder and you're like, I have to be a racist or my family, my, my wife's new boyfriend will starve. <laughs> Even if you're in that kind of situation, you know what I mean? You can still talk around it and just be on here. You can like literally dress up in blackface on this on this platform still and probably more than likely make like a million of dollars. Like what the fuck else do you need from kick? You know what I mean? Like I have to be able to stream pornography and also just any song that's immediately trending right now. <laughs> I need to be able to make money while making no content of my own. Or literally just screaming slurs at the top of my voice. I turned on one of those when it came out. I don't know if it's different right now, but I don't care. I don't even, I can't even watch Twitch while Twitch is live. That's one of the main reasons I'm here. Cause I'm like, this shit's fucking trash. <laughs> Twitch sucks. You turn it on. If you don't have, I don't know, magic Twitch fucking juice, whatever the fuck. It's just like, all right, Hey man, here's three minutes of you turn it on. Here's three minutes of commercials. Like right off the bat. Okay click bye motherfucker <laughs> hope you're not a twitch only streamer because i'm not watching your shit i watch every stream i watch on youtube and then if it's a twitch streamer maybe i catch the clips shout out if you're making money over there i heard it's like good it's a great community okay cool but ultimately like all the fucking kick i'm on kick i'm on rumble like what are you fucking <laughs> just start live streaming to only fans man I, I feel like you can get away with uh, what you really need to be getting away with there you know what i'm saying The three C's of ha happiness, Crowder, Cuck content. <laughs> I've only ever seen one video about him, and it was a tour of his house. I respected how it really was, NGL. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's really just, like, shameless, you know? Wh which is more, like, I think that's more prescriptive or descriptive. Predictive and descriptive of, of his disposition, but... Um, I digress. And I think the guy just doesn't care. I think he's beyond concerned, which is fine. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not mad at him, but I think it would be funny to fuck with him. Uh, like th two things can be true. Don't say slurs and don't be naked in videos and you can do fine on YouTube. Literally, literally, <laughs> People, I can't get away with anything on YouTube these days. Like bro, Vosh is still here. Keffels is still on this fucking platform. You know what I mean? And that's on like my side of shit. So like on the right side, like I think fucking like Sargon can is can't is Sargon of a cod still fucking like present on this fucking platform and shit? It, it's insanity. And then Twitch, man. If someone gets banned on Twitch, but they're like a famous person that you have to talk about, and then they they show up in a clip, you get fucking Dylan Burns <laughs> just fucking smoked. It is, they walk up behind you with a fucking Makarov and put one right behind you. You're pop, pop. <laughs> Bye. Gone forever. See ya, bud. I think that happened to fucking uh, Destiny, too, didn't it, for a little while? He might have came back, but still. Goddamn. I'm scared Rumble will be like the rock bottom SpongeBob vibe. I haven't checked it out. I mean, that it, the people that like would stream on the people that ever like you should check me out on this kick and Rumble is like okay, it's it dog shit content here. I don't know what what point it gets better. I was fucking thirteen. All right, I watched it was Jackass when I was a kid. We used to fucking like try to light fireworks and let them go off in our hands. And fucking uh, staple pieces of paper to our bodies and shit. And like run into each other with shopping carts. The fucking early 2000s were psychotic. All right. Like I, I, 
Kids are kids. Are, I'm not mad at the teenage boys. They just they they do what they do. Yeah, you say boys will be boys. It's like uh, you're permitting their behavior. No, you can't stop it. They're fucking psychotic. <laughs> it's a fucking teenage boy. They're literally insane. You have to send them to like military school. Or, like, chain them to radiators to get them to stop doing stuff, and then that only makes them worse somehow. Like, it's just... Just prepare for containment and the worst takes ever. Like, if you've never hit... If you've never gone through male puberty and had your first testosterone wash and just been like, man, for some reason, I feel like I want to kill something and then eat it with my real teeth. Like, that's... There, there's real no, there's no real way to prepare for it or like mitigate the damage of just like a child who's like, my favorite things are Mario Kart and also crayons. And then like the next day, he's like, I have uh, issues right now that I don't know how to deal with, and I'm getting big. All of my joints hurt, and I can punch holes and stuff now. <laughs> Fucking psychotic. I think Sargon still has his Giga Gay Lotus Eater podcast, which is so dedicated following. You're not likely to see him in the wild anymore, though. Those days are long gone. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the ancient grifters, that's like grift. The, the, the ancient grifter version, or not even ancient, just the grifter version of Vegas. Do you guys know like Vegas shows? Like when your career ends as a professional singer, retirement for you is Vegas, right? If you're a professional entertainer, really, of any like ilk, if you can get, if you can do Vegas, You'll do Vegas shows, like six shows, five shows a night in Las Vegas. You make a fuckload of money and you just stay there, right? And like no one talks about you. Your profile stays like lukewarm or goes down. But when people go to Las Vegas, they'll get like playbills like, oh, shit, I forgot about Louis C.K. is here. Louis C.K. is doing five nights at the fucking Feather Room. Like, what the fuck? I thought that guy died. Nope, he's still alive. He's in Las Vegas. It's the retirement community for entertain entertainers. For uh, right-wing fucking uh, grift kings, when you get old enough, you just start a locked-off-from-the-world podcast. <laughs> Alex Jones is the most successful. Infowars. But it is, like, separated from everything. And then you just kind of go there. You never make appearances. No one... Because you, you basically have to hit... The, the entire point of being a right-wing grifter is to play chicken with a slur. All right. The whole time. That's really what you're doing. You play chicken with a slur or you play chicken with advocating genocide against somebody. Right. Um, if you do it too fast, you're never going to hit the vibe. So if you're like Mike, Matt Walsh, right? Matt Walsh doesn't have the, he doesn't have the fucking, the juice to become a real right wing grifter. He's got no charisma. He's gross and twerpy looking like no real red blooded, American man who's a fucking like, you know, bigot or whatever is going to look at Matt Walsh and be like, I want to give this guy money. If you have to choose, like if you're like, if you're a dumb fuck, you know what I mean? You're like, you drive an F-350, you breathe almost exclusively like tailpipe carbon dioxide and fucking aerosolized lead every day. You wake up with your paintios and fucking throw them back with like a fucking beer. You're not going to, you're not going to fucking listen to Matt Walsh's fake ass. Like I've practiced a deep voice uh, for the radio. <laughs> fake is fucking hey everybody i'm not five four <laughs> fucking ass or you can listen to let me tell you right now the deep state's coming for you they got your kids and uh they got your kids your kids have been cloned they're in the trunk of a car heading off a cliff in downtown colorado right now i'll tell you what i've got a, i've got a fucking telescope i can see it i can see it i've seen it the devil's coming satan is upon us the, the, the deep state is going to get you satanic vampires from Mars. Like, if you could get, if, like, if we, which are you going to choose? Matt Walsh is over here. Uh, what we need to do is, um, uh, these people think that they're girls and they're actually not, huh? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I wrote a girl, I, I wrote a book for children. I'm a, I'm a best-selling author. Like, first off, okay. <laughs> to steal, to steal a Shane Gill Gillis joke. It's, it's gay. <laughs> That's 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 kind of it's it's a little lame. <laughs> he wrote a book. Those are for weirdos. I didn't write a book. I published one. It's a very different. I talked. Someone else typed it down. <laughs> Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh. Fucking like I'm gonna write a book for children with his little fucking baby back there. Like everyone knows he's a fucking closet. Fucking he, he, he's a closet diddler. Like it's just he's just built like one. <laughs> It's just that's Matt Walsh's entire thing. So like, are you gonna choose him or are you gonna choose Alex Jones? Alex Jones every time. 
So Matt Walsh has to like hit it at 150% and just basically advocate for genocide off rip to be useful to other people because then they can kind of like pawn him around and be like, well, you know, uh, people should have the right of free speech. Kind of like dog whistle. And like he's useful in that way, but he's never making it to Vegas. If, if there's anything that you can hang your hat on, it's just knowing that like even like even in his circles, Matt Walsh is like a, he, he is like fucking, uh, you know, he, <laughs> him, Steven Crowder, Steven Crowder's never making it to Vegas. He's Steven. You, you think he is? Cause he's still in the mug club and shit right now. But the second he gets clicked off of direct access to like new people on YouTube, that shit's going to fucking shuttle out. Maybe he'll catch on, but like Glenn Beck, Glenn Beck is fucking grifter Vegas royalty. Glenn Beck got fucking booted out of everything because Glenn Beck, he went up to the line and crossed a little bit. He is in Vegas. Tucker Carlson, not really in Vegas. Tucker Carlson's on fucking Twitter. You know what I mean? He fucked it up. He dropped the bag at the end. (laughs) The problem with Matt Walsh is he has less charisma than Ron DeSantis. It's insane. It's an insanely, insanely deep lack of charisma. Like, there's a reason, like, I don't ever want to cover anything from him. Because, like, his existence is its own self-mockery. Like, I can't believe nobody's ever just, like, if you ever want to fuck, if you ever just want to not care about what fucking Matt Walsh has to say anymore, just understand this. The beard isn't there because of, like, some masculine thing. He just has a horrible dork acne scars. Like, if you see him without the beard, he just looks like a Revenge of the Nerds back character, right? Like, his whole body is built to receive wedgies. The dead end. Like he, he like I, I, I homeschool my kids because I don't trust. Now you homeschool your kids because you legitimately might get accosted by an eighth grader who will fucking run your pockets and put your little fucking stretch tidy whities all over the bridge of your nose. Like he's not safe around children because he's too small and he's just got little acne scars and so he grew out his beard. He's just a little fuck queen, bro. <laughs> Carlson is independently wealthy. So Carson, Curtis the Carlson, yeah, that's a good point. He doesn't really have to go to Vegas because he was already rich, which is like the, the grifter-like side thing, you know. Alex Jones, though, I'm out here working, all right, until the day I die, which could be any moment. <laughs> Matt is sure creepy about underage girls. He's creepy about everybody. He's creepy about everybody. <laughs> I was going to say, imagine Steven Crowder in front of a crowd of old pensioners from Florida doing his shitty routine, but then I realized that is genuinely just how he is. I mean, he does that routine in front of pensioners from Florida. Like, I'm not bringing it up because I will, I, I, I don't want to expose you to carcinogenic risks, and you can get brain cancer. This is a, leg- a legitimate warning from the internet. Long-term exposure to Steven Crowder's version of quote-unquote comedy has been shown by the state of California to have direct, con- direct connections to mesothelioma, brain cancer, heart cancer, and testicular cancer. If you or a loved one have been exposed to Steven Crowder, please visit an ER immediately. <laughs> that motherfucker will like melt your brain. It's, it's the most unfathomably unfunny shit you've ever heard. Tyler, do you know about the Matt Walsh diaper wrestling lore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt Matt Walsh likes to dress up grown men in fucking diapers and like <laughs> a guy with fucking little schwats to get tattoo <laughs> and have him do backyard wrestling. My man's got weird friends. It's, it's no girl energy, which is like, you know, th- this is what really why like teenage boys are kind of like, you know, okay, I, I kind of get it is because you can, as a teenage boy, it's hard to like, understand like temporality all right like the fact that you will be an adult someday and like when you're starting to become like transition from a child to a like an adult man it's difficult to understand your place in the world and so you try to find things that are like make sense to you and that you can kind of like understand like i I can connect with that so like teenage boys are dumb fucks and they just like fight randomly because they have like chimpanzee brain chunks and they're like, I'm going to fucking establish dominance over my friend, bully people. They're mean because they're trying to figure shit out. Cause also like you can't fucking cry or anything because I you're gay. <laughs> fucking then like your whole life could fall apart or so you think it's not bad that it's not that bad kid. 
And then when you see somebody like Matt Walsh doing backyard wrestling with other friends, you're like, oh, man, this guy's pretty cool. Like, that's some shit that I would do with my friends. Not understanding, because you don't have life experience yet, that is mad fucking weird for somebody that's in their, like, early 30s to be doing, like, early teens, teenage boy weird shit with his friends. Like, shirtless fucking diaper wrestling in the backyard. For... For shits and giggles on a bad camera phone video. Like, it's mad weird. It's just mad weird. Like, it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny. It wasn't a test of skill. Why did the diaper need to be on? What, what's the part where you enjoy this? You know what I mean? <laughs> for, for teenage boys just acting out against, like, societal rules in a general sense is like it it is is a direct act of like establishing yourself as an individual as you like approach adulthood because you don't know how to be an adult yet so you kind of do anything that comes to mind most of the time for young boys teenage boys it's like i'm going to do something repugnant because you probably statistically don't have the ability to be the best at something else you're not going to be you know, one of like the starting string quarterback fucking, uh, you know, you're the starting center, you're fucking power forward, right? Like you're mad good at sports. You're the best at, you're the valedictorian. You're to be like distinguished because of like the quality of your existence is hard because there's only so many slots for that generally. So this is just a, a truism. Even if you do have like some like power inside of you that you think like the world could benefit from, so what you do instead is you act out in the other way and, and approach infamy as a way to say, like, I'm here. I'm an individual. I'm alive. Like, I exist outside of the sort of um, psychological placenta of my youth. You know what I mean? I need to fucking, like, separate myself permanently from the idealist existence that is being somebody's child, you know? If you ever think about how fucking weird it is to be a kid... Compared to, like, when you're an adult now, like, how strange would it be, like, I'm in my mid-30s, like, how strange would it be for everyone that I talk to to refer to me as, like, my dad's kid? You know, aren't you, aren't you Dennis's son? Aren't you his son? Like, aren't you her, her son? Like, oh, you're this kid, like, you're a child, you're a child, you're a child, like, being, like, having that repeated to you while also starting to feel like, and because of the societal pressures that are put on you, on kids these days, being told that you have to be a man. You have to be a grown up. You have to be a blah, blah, blah. But you're also like precluded from any ability to do any of the things that make you feel like a grown up. You can't have a real job. You can't have real responsibilities because you shouldn't and you don't need them really. Um, but you are like, you know, just completely obliterated with signals. And this was true in the 90s and the 2000s and stuff. The Internet's not particularly unique. Maybe it hits a little bit more often, but unironically, I think the internet gives as many outs to these kind of issues as it does creates new pathways for them to occur. Um, you just get obliterated with that shit. And so, like, you know, kids like, bro, how am I going to stand out? How am I going to make myself useful? Like, am I going to be a man someday? Like, what the fuck does that mean for me? Like, no, no one talks to me. I, I feel like I don't exist. I'm like alone in this classroom. I'm not good at sports. I feel like I'm stupid. Like, I, I, I watch people play chess on the internet and I don't understand it. All I want to do is like, I don't know, fucking, I, I love categorizing the rocks in my neighborhood. Like every time I see a neat rock, I pick it up and I have a little rock collection that I don't tell anyone about because they, they call me, they're going to call you gay in the back of your head. They'll call you gay. That's the back of every fucking teenage boy's head. Watch out. They'll do it. They'll find out that you have a heart. <laughs> they'll kill you. They'll kill you for feeling love. <laughs> And uh, and it fucks kids up, man. That shit will fuck. That shit will obliterate you. And like, there's just no out for it. You know what I mean? Other than just getting older. Like high school sucks. It does. But yeah, people like fucking Matt Walsh and they prey on that because they are fucking. They're gooners. They're just adult gooners with gooner behavior. <laughs> Weird shit. Like, I don't think a teenager would identify with me, and I I don't. Under, like it would be like maybe like tangentially maybe they could like respect me somehow you know what i mean like if i'm just trying to think about it or like they'd be like that's an adult man but the possibility of a 
of a of a teenager looking at me and saying he just like me for real for real would be an insult to me because <laughs> I've tried so hard to get away from that aspect of my life. But these guys like, and I say this again and again and again, I find like direct outreach programs to youth, which a lot of these guys have as being just particularly suspicious, just f- very weird. Just like a bunch of adult men just being like, Hey man, we all got to get together and gather up a bunch of children. And then we're going to do 10 year old, 15 year old versions of rap songs to try to convince them that our political leanings are right so they vote the correct way in the future but gay is cool gay is cool gay is a good thing to be out there by the way kids but it's that fear of um basically the deeper way i'm I'm saying it in a stupid way just in case there is like passing people they can understand it because if i say what your actual fear is as a uh as a teenage boy is the the potentiality of emasculization emasculization and social ostracization no like fucking child is going to be like oh okay you know that makes sense it's a real hard thing to like accomplish like what he fears is the loss of his penis <laughs> you know what i'm saying uh but that like they're gonna think you're gay that that's like a real fear or they're gonna know they're gonna know you're gay <laughs> it's just evil thought in the back of your head and it's fine to be those things it's fine if you're if you're a kid and you're struggling, especially you're a young man or a young masculine person, right, dealing with testosterone dumps. Actually, fuck it. Some of you, uh, some of you trans masks also need this talk because, with all due respect, although you're adults, you have not yet hit male puberty or you are now going through it. And I see in some of you what I saw in myself when I first got my massive first massive doses of testosterone. Go read. Uh, There's a bluebird in my heart. Um, by what's his name? Ah, fuck me. Bluebird, uh, the drunk guy. Don't tell me. I got it on the top of my head. I can't. What is all this? Bukowski by Charles Bukowski. Uh, the bluebird. There's a bluebird in my heart, but I won't let him out. <laughs> go in, go in. Go and read that. Go and read that poem to yourself, all right? You don't have to share it. You don't have to report back. If you are ever out there and you're feeling, like, emasculated or nervous or you feel like people don't get you, Charles Bukowski understands, all right? He's kind of a piece of shit. He wasn't the best person, but I think that's kind of the best thing to get from him is that, you know, some of us are pieces of shit. Some of us are imperfect, and we've all got a little bluebird in our heart that we've been trying to drown with liquor and cigarettes and hiding from the world because you know somebody might find out that he lives in there so maybe one day you'll you'll kill him off so you no one will have to ever you never have to worry about anyone hearing him sing saddest saddest fucking thought in the world maybe not something everybody understands but like i got, if i could have sent that one fucking back in time to young me i'd be like mm. i probably would have been fucking pissed and like just um, ignore it you can't sit a kid down. Don't sit a kid down and be like, you need to read this poem. You know, as a fucking like, don't do that because then you'll ruin the effect of it. Uh, just sneak it in there somewhere, okay? It uses adult terms, but sometimes the kids need to hear the adult terms to actually fucking become adults. They, they, they're they're going to get there eventually. Get some sleep. Me and Bukowski say the same birthday. Shake my head. Fuck yeah. Be gay, do crime. Every day, every day, every day. Groomer Gooners. Be the cringe you want to see in the world. <laughs> I don't know how to spell Gandhi. Gandhi? I have no idea. We want the Liver King audience. <sighs> liver King is the most unwell looking human being I've ever seen in my life. I cannot imagine looking at Liver King and wanting to like be him. He, he looks like um, that Valheim game. Or like World of War, he looks like a World of Warcraft character that's just like that's just like been spawned into the world. You know what I mean? Just like a disheveled, homeless gnome or dwarf, like berserker. But he's like level one, and someone just cast like three turn explode on him, and he's about to fucking pop. Impossible for me to take seriously. He's just his body is gross. It's just it looks like. His whole fucking existence, he just looks like a swollen nut. Like if you just if you if you just fucking put a rubber band around a testicle and leave it for a couple days, 
it will be you will not be able to tell the difference between it and liver king it is the same thing the exact same creature down to the fucking skin tone Whenever he was caught using steroids, I was amazed that there were people who thought he was clean. <sighs> it's f- gnarly. The, the, the little that people know about steroids is wild. Because it's they're like, that guy's got to be using him. Like, there's no way that person's using steroids. Like, <laughs> this is, like, they'll point to a guy that goes to the gym every day, like six times a week, and is like capped out. Capped out at like 235 pounds at six foot. And, like, has no vascularity. His skin looks normal. All of his hair is in the right place. He's got, like, a normal size neck. His face looks like a human face. And they're like, that guy's got to be on steroids. No, man. No. You can't go to the gym that much and then eat food and do steroids and stay that small. It's impossible. <laughs> and then they see guys who are like, there's people that think Sam Sulik's not on steroids. And I think fucking Sulik's been like, yeah, man, I juice. Obviously. Like, very clearly, I fucking, I, I, I fucking juice. No way. No way. Yeah. I don't even think Liver King's muscles are real. I'm like 99% sure he's got ab and chest implants. Like 99% sure. His body moves like a fucking G.I. Joe. I won't get tricked into using a rubber band like that again. Nice try. Hey, I'm going to get you guys one day. 3D realistic World of Warcraft <laughs> Blizzard Dwarf photorealistic for real. Eugenio Cooney looks worse than Liver King, but in the other direction. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know how she's still alive. Uh, that's just, uh, she's profoundly unhealthy. I will never cover her on the channel because I don't feel like having discussions about her. I give him like a year. I, he might even have that. I think he had a, fu- he had like liver failure. If you're that red, as a as a white person, right? Like that's not skin that's not a skin tone you're supposed to have. That that means that your vascularity is insanely high. I think his entire face is full of burst capillaries. So like his blood pressure is probably like pushing 300. That dude's he's approaching the end He's not just burning the candle at both ends. He's cracked wax out of the middle of it and is burning that part as well. I think he benefited from the big lie effect. The only people who believe he's not on steroids are the only people who also buy his products. Yeah, 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 yeah. Liver King is built like those action figures that people blow up with water. <laughs> Shout out the 90s. Um, so whenever- okay. So I'm going to hop into the first thing. <clears throat> Let me, I, I, you know, I, I'll probably, it'll probably come up during this. Um, we'll start talking about economics. I looked up, this is from a guy named Mentis wave. I've never, uh, interacted with his content before. He is, uh, maybe a crypto fascist. I don't know. He uses some crypto fascist imagery. He's got the old fucking, um, what do you call it? I'll just bring it down here. We'll just bring it up on the screen. He's got the old school, um, vapor wave stuff in the background, the vapor wave set up, you know, uh, don't know if that's like the case or not. Doing a lot of like really, really, really shitty. I'm gonna make them look ugly. Photoshops. Uh, this is the most poll coded fucking website I've ever seen. <clears throat> Tremendous. The bread tube ideological robot factory. I don't know. Is this shit? Is this, is this gonna be like fucking like absolutely cracked out nonsense? This just seems like uh, you know when like little kids have that uh, they're in their bed. Right, and they've got those mobile things because they're infants and they just need like constant simulation, or they'll cry and their parents will actually have to like fucking pick them up. This that's what this is for people that are like they just never get off a of fucking pole. That th- this is it. This is what pole looks like. like. This is just a concentration of any fucking given meme cycle with the like shit that's all TOS just trimmed off the side, like so much extra fat. The amount of color and like. Dude, this is the preview. Look how many fucking scene transitions there are in this shit. So this is going to be wild. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, This person um, identifies themselves as rationalist and right libertarian leaning. Yes, I like hope. Hoppy, whatever the fuck that is. This is one of these fucking uh, super econ dorks who's going to have like one person that they refer to all the fucking time. It's like, this is my guy. 
<laughs> start. <laughs> you have a fucking debate with them, they're gonna start fucking immediately pissing their pants. Do you know the difference between uh, positive rights and negative rights? Like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> Did he popularize the carnivore diet with Jordan Peterson? Uh, oh, fucking redhead? I think maybe. I don't know, but I know he's a big car all carnivore diet guy, which is just fucking insane. Like, there's just no evidence. All of the evidence for the carnivore diet, like the all carnivore diet, from what I understand, comes from just Jordan Peterson's daughter. Like, if there's another dietitian out there who's like. Oh no, I've I've like I, I I've studied this. Like even Atkins has like there's other parts to it. But the just you can eat anything you want, it just has to be meat. Meat all the time. Meat all the time. Like, bro, did you just do you just shit gravy like fucking constantly? <laughs> I can't have that broccoli. If I get Jordan Peterson had himself some like fuck he had like a little apple cider and he like ah, starts dying, bro. That ain't good. That's an old fucking, uh, that's an old Ron White joke. <laughs> I don't know what happened to you. You're kicking back beef broth. <laughs> Not just a carnivore diet, but raw. Oh, yeah. He's part of the pro scurvy agenda. <laughs> and gout. Yeah. My man's, my man's on that fucking, uh, on that, uh, uh, Bobby Hill diet when he goes and starts only eating at the fucking like canned uh, Jewish deli <laughs> fucking uh, restaurant. He's only eating like gefilte fish and fucking uh, tuna, <laughs> which is hilarious because the protein is more available in cooked meat. Yeah, like our, our entire existence is built to eat the food that we have built our fucking society around. Like it might be bad for you, but cultivated grain. Uh, and farm raised cooked meats and fish and stuff like that's those are just the ideal staples for your diet <laughs> There's no way around it um you can be more moderate with like the way that you can consum consume it but like yeah cultivated vegetables and grains uh, uh farm raised meats and like just traditionally fished fish you know, staple fish if you're a fucking island nation with notable like digressions from it if, in, in specific cultures that were literally just not part of the agrarian social evolution that other parts of the world went through. Ooh. I remember the gout episode was great. Yeah. <clears throat> Pro agriculture screen, stream. Let's go. I, the people... <sighs> People that are like anti agriculture are fucking weird, man. I don't know. I don't get it. I can be like, I, I understand, like, I don't like factory farming and like unethical practices in farming. That's all makes perfect sense because, like, yeah, it'll make you feel bad. And then also sometimes it's just fucking disgusting, you know? Like, and there's usually a lot of better alternatives when people try to save money. And, Generally, it provides a worse product overall. Like, the better you treat the animals, the better they're going to fucking taste in the first place and the more healthy they're going to be. All that shit, you know? Um, but, like, the other people who are just like, I don't think that we should have farms anymore. <laughs> what? I've heard that take. I can't remember who said it because they don't deserve to be committed to memory. But I have heard that take. We shouldn't have farms. So so how do you handle the immediate population die off? I just like what do you do? We should forage for everything. Oh, how about if we put all the stuff we forage for in one fucking area that we control and then uh we can prevent pests and, and then we don't have to fucking roll a D20 um to survive every winter. How about we do that instead? Oh my god. So whenever I say an artist's opinion doesn't matter on their art it's because whenever an artist says this is worth $50 to me and somebody else Why is it always $50? Two seconds into Asmongold talking, this fucking idiot. What? Who? It's the I fucking keep seeing the same argument. Like these AI guys, they're plagiarizing. Why is it always 50 fucking dollars? Why is that the fucking dollar amount? I keep seeing. It's, it just gets shared. 
between everyone. I hear stuff repeated a bunch, but that one is nuts. Who is it? Identify yourself, furry foot artist who is charging $50 for low grade, stinky feet pictures and set off the AI revolution. Identify yourself, come forward. We're going to sacrifice you to these fucking idiots so that we can return a sense of normalcy to the art community, okay? Whoever you are, Mr. $50. It, that, I know exactly what that is. <clears throat> is it, does anyone not know? What were, you com what were you commissioning for $50 otherwise? What, what was it? That all of you, all of you were just, you all, all of you were like, I don't know why I have to pay an artist, artist $50 for this. What the fuck were you paying him for? Because I know it wasn't a logo. I, I know what, what, what you just like, what you just wanted, like uh, a, a portrait of yourself painted. I don't think that's what was going on because you're too fucking, you're not built that way. I know what you were buying for $50. The internet knows what you were buying for $50. Why is it always the 50? Is it, is this a dog whistle for like furry foot fetish dudes? I know it could be any like fucking hentai commission. You know what I mean? Any fucking porn art commission. It could be that. But I am just going to dog on the AI people until I fucking die. Because there's only one thing people that look like Asmongold are commissioning from artists for $50. There's one fucking thing. Name me another one. Show me what it was. Show me what it was. Show me what the fuck it was. Because I'll tell you, I know exactly what the fuck it was. It's a picture of Sonic the Hedgehog stepping on a small U. That's what you're buying for $50. That's what all of you are buying for $50. That's why we have this happening at once. That and fucking underage Japanese schoolgirl shit. Shout out my man, Shout Adversity. Shout out Victoria, Australia Police Investigations Unit. <laughs> he else says, no, it's not. The artist can still try to charge $50 for it, but nobody has to buy it because that value is decided by the customer. Hey, internets. So this is an extra. My man, my man, shout out Asmongold for like articulating um, like supply chain fuckery. <laughs> he just, he just, it's basically like articulating scabbing. It's like the inversion of uh, false scarcity. Video because this is going to be on one of those topics that tends to generate a little bit of butt hurt due to the brutally honest mixture of red pilling that I am about to throw down. No, what? No. You see, the thing is... Shut up. Fucking gotta watch you faster now. God damn it. You guys have to... If you, Next time, any of you... Look, I have certain kind of voices I actually want to hear. I want to hear radio. I will listen to fucking Alex Jones say anything. I don't care. I love the fu I love the way he talks. Y'all have to fucking start trigger warning me. From now on, anytime I have to listen to one of these fucking only fucking half his balls dropped fucking basement dwelling fucking dickheads with a goddamn rant sona, you have to fucking say trigger warning Tyler, fucking cringe alert incoming. Jesus fucking Christ. I just need everyone to understand there's going to be some butt hurt coming. Oh, wait, what? You got a bunch of other dudes kicked back. They got fuck. They've got some sort of fucking Japanese dating game on their right screen on this. They're watching that. And then like on one other tiny screen, they're watching their dad's life savings fucking tank in Bitcoin. God fucking damn it. Ugh. A lot of economic concepts, as it turns out, are in fact really, really, really easy to understand. So easy that a kid could get it. The problem, though, and central planning of the economy can work. You're completely wrong. Central planning of the economy can work. If we used a bunch of supercomputers, then we'd be able to calculate what the prices of everything should be and how much of every good should be produced and how much of each good any given person should buy. It would be so much more efficient and fair than a quote-unquote free market. Sure, it didn't work too well the last times it's been tried. Wrong it's. But they didn't have the technology we have now. I'm telling you, if we just tried it that way, it would work. Why are you adding additional, like, sentences? And this is the entirety of it. I don't know who these guys are. Um, I, I've never, is this, I, I guess this is probably a central planned economy argument. I haven't heard necessarily this one. Is this like, is this how we get to the gay uh, space communism meme, right? Like that's like the, 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 the furthest end of it. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't think planned economies are particularly good. 
I'm not a planned economy guy. They have failed. And the reason why you see so much disagreement in the field of economics is often down to a very simple but also very annoying concept known as intellectual honesty. Now, intellectual honesty is best understood as being willing to accept the fact that what is true is not always the same thing as what you feel to be true or want to be true. It's the acceptance of the reality that there is often a disconnect there. Things aren't always... Why would you put a definition on screen and not just read it? <laughs> it's going to be what you want them to be. You have to instead care about what is true, and you need to be only interested in figuring out the truth. And you have to be willing to accept it when you see it. And Based so pro-dialectical materialism. Or logical or rational or whatever that overwhelmingly refutes what one feels to be true. An intellectually honest person will accept that truth. Because when you are being- What, what did, did Vosh, Vosh really said this? Equality good, therefore equality real? That's not a syllogism. Who, who, when did Vosh make this? When did Vosh make this statement? What is this? What's going on here? What is happening? I, well, Tyler, why are you pausing? He's talking. He's putting things up on the screen that I also have to address. We're, we're getting hit with multiple. Look at who is the fucking crackhead. The f absolute fucking methadone annihilated brain poisoned individual that can see all of the shit that's happening on this screen and be like, I am being uh, informed right now. Like, bro, we got fucking, what is this world of Warcraft? I got fucking squiggle arms down here. I got fucking a Vosh meme. There was another definition up two seconds ago. There was another meme and a definition up three more seconds ago. We're a minute 25 in. It's not the necessarily just the boringness of the visuals that slows me and I'm just like I can't fucking take it. It's just the, the the lack of getting to the fucking point while also making like additional extra points. What the fuck is going on here? Being intellectually honest, the objective truth is all one ultimately cares about, and that is what their mind is set on figuring out. A mind that is firmly rooted in honest reasoning. However, an intellectually dishonest person cares a bit about more so their truth, and their mind can be better described as a rationalization hamster. And that's what you have. Who are these people? How can you prove that? What are you talking about? Also, I looked up this rationalization hamster, hamster because I thought it was a person. <laughs> the rationalization hamster is just a sexist version of circular logic. Uh, which is the you know ba begging the question. So it, it's just assuming uh, things are true because they're true in a big circle, right? So it's like saying um, it's hard to fuck. It's always hard to put a bad like logical chunk together. I wish he would have put one right here. Um, I'm nice because I'm a person. I'm a person, therefore I'm nice. I'm nice because I'm a person. I'm a person, therefore I'm nice. Like that, it, you don't have the, you don't have the third part of your fucking syllogism, right? You know, it's, you know minor, major, whatever the fuck, all of that good shit. My predicates, um, it, it's it, ancient Greek shit, right? Greeks figured this out. Um, we're just renaming it, and renaming it. But apparently, the uh, the rationalization hamster. I think did I explain? I thought the rationalization hamster might be a person. So it, I thought basic economics versus the rationalization hamster because i'm fucking so brain poisoned by the internet was literally a person versus another person i didn't realize it was just a poorly articulated uh in joke for i guess i don't know whoever fucking understands all whatever's going on here uh, but the reason it's sexist is because the rationalization hamster specifically um online according to urban dictionary and shit uh, who gives a f I, i'm pretty sure it's not in like you know a more reputable publication than that um, is because that's just how women run on a hamster wheel in order to justify things to themselves again and again and again. I, I don't know why that had to have been. I don't know why you had to create a sexist version of it. I'm not saying he's using it in that way here. I'm just saying more than likely he uses it that way because there's no way that this dude doesn't learn everything that he learns from like just the most dog shit fucking lit threads, you know? Or worse, he's a fucking, like, for t fucking uh, subreddit, whatever, subreddit, 4chan, subreddit. I don't even know what the fuck it's called. I can't fuck with Reddit. You have intellectually honest people based on reasoning. Intellectual honesty, high, reels before feels. Logical mind has authority over the rational. This is stupid. You're, you're stupid for writing this out like that, and I fucking despise you. Aware of man's flaws. No, no fucking uh, possessive apostrophe there. Rationalization hamster has authority over the logical mind, lives in denial, focused on the truth. What he's trying to articulate is the difference between um, idealism and materialism, by the way. Um, but it's not like uh, dumbing it down for kids. It's just dumbing it down. <laughs> Making it fucking sound stupid as shit. 
searching out the truth, and then you have people with the rationalization hamster searching out evidence that meets their truth. The more reality contradicts what the intellectually dishonest person wants to be true, the faster the hamster has to spin in that wheel, in order to come up with smart-sounding but ultimately ridiculous and logically fallacious reasons for why their truth is somehow the truth, when it is not. However, it's important to also understand that none of us are perfect here. All human beings are subject to at least some degree of the rationalization hamster, just some significantly more than others. And this is just, first off, you have to prove this because you're just, in, you're, you're installing. I'm not even saying you're wrong, but you just have to provide a proof for this thing that basically would sound invented to anybody that talks about this shit at a higher level. It just sound, you just sound like you're, it's just made up. This is gobbledygook jargon horse shit. You know what I mean? You can just start putting words in here and it's, I would believe it just as like, it just as like, you just start switching the fucking nouns out. Because there's no real proof for this. You're saying some people, uh, some people are rationalization hamsters. Some people are are smart babbies. Some people are feels over reels. Some people are reels over feels. Uh, what the 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 real way to start trying to have this is some people a, a more intellectually honest way to have this discussion is by saying some people know how to engage with as a intentional aspect of their character and curiosity regarding the world, deductive reasoning. Some people know how to use deduction in order to approach an objective truth. Other people use induction, observed sensory data, in order to put together a version of the truth that may or may not be correct. Uh, there's deeper aspects of this that I don't know if you're going to even be capable of getting into. I'm sorry if I'm condescending to you, but you're the one that's fucking, uh, doing this over world of Warcraft and, and fucking dog shit. Goddamn 4chan. These aren't 4chan memes. This is Reddit shit. Only Reddit uses this font. <laughs> God damn. It's a red pill reference. Uh, trust me on this. As someone who has studied hypnosis, I know this very well. The mind will do some very, very weird thing. And trust me on this. As someone who has studied hypnosis, I know this very well. The mind will do just some significantly more than others. And trust me on this. As someone who has studied hypnosis, I know this very well. The mind just some significantly more than others. And trust me on this. As someone who has studied hypnosis, I know this very well. The mind. Will okay, I had to listen to that. Like five. Okay. Thank you for recommending this content <laughs> Hey if you're if you're stopping by right and you're you're getting ready to hop down in the comments and uh he hasn't even engaged with his arguments he is relying solely on ad hominems and insulting him first off that's not what an ad hominem is. Second, yes. You're you're stepping out. You're stepping real far out. <laughs> you're stepping real. You're stepping. You're stepping real far out of the circle of people that's huge. A huge circle of people that I can fucking respect when they have the, the I have you know who this is? We're gas station smart again. This is the fucking asshole on second shift that you hate to be behind the counter with. Could you please just stock the fucking payday bars, Phil? Could you stock the fucking payday bars and stop telling me about how you corrected a woman on the proper use of tarot cards at Barnes and Nobles? Please just stock the fucking payday bars, Carl. Please, I will fucking throw you in front of a bus. That is this guy. If you, can I get a fucking, can I get a, like a little clap emoji if you've had to work with this asshole in your life? Oh my God. As someone who studied hypnotism, I'm well aware of the implications. Dude, if this is just a meme, this is fire. If this is just a meme, this is the, you're the best, dude. You you are you are a king amongst kings, because this is indiscernible from satire. There is no way you take yourself seriously. It has to be. If this is just a really concentrated excuse to fucking like to blue balls a slur, I have nothing but respect for you. In that case, I am I'm a hundred percent down for it. 
But motherfucker, if you did this for real, if this was serious, call your mom. All right. I just want you to log off the, call your mom and ask her like, am I doing okay? Like, mom, are you proud of me? <laughs> mom, his dad said my name in the last few weeks. <laughs> just call your mom, man. Cause there's no. <laughs> oh, okay. of course I know him. He was me in my alt right phase. That shit's wild. Everybody has a cringe moment, by the way. I've said cringe shit, dude. I used to fucking swing around a little boken. I hit my sister in the face with a fake Japanese wooden sword when I was in fucking high school because I took Roroni Kenshin too seriously. All right, none of us are above this. None of us are above this. But you gotta destroy the written record, okay? I didn't film it, and if I did, I would have burned that fucking film. I hit her on accident, by the way. I wasn't like, ah, I fucking like got her. I wasn't freaked out. I was just trying to do cool spin moves I saw in an anime. And I accidentally hit my little sister in the face with a bowken. Max cringe. Knowing what that word means. Another additional layer of cringe. We're all cringe. We're in it together, bud. We're in it together. But you got to know. You got to destroy the record of this. Delete this video. Or at least re-edit it and cut that part out. Because goddamn. <clears throat> goddamn. Goddamn. <laughs> You're rooting for him again. I got hypnotized. <laughs> Shout out hypno fetish porn, bro. I know what you were trying to spend your fifty dollars on. <laughs> okay, I need you to draw her, and her name needs to be Sydney, and and she needs to be in biology class. And I have a watch, and I spin it around, and she says, "Oh boy, I really like Guild Wars." <laughs> will do some very very weird things when what it expects to experience does not line up with what is actually going on around it so there is Gunner somewhat King. of a gray area here the difference though is which side of our mind is more in control you have a small hamster that you are aware of and you keep fully in check or is that hamster a big boy that has fully asserted his dominance that's the main difference between an intellectually honest and intellectually dishonest person because if that hamster is a big boy and he's asserted his dominance you can't tell the difference between these two things anymore and so people who don't have this bro you <laughs> This is fake shit. I can't believe this video has 40k control, views. We're going to end up coming up with some really, really insane arguments in order to pretend that their feels are reals. And the more ridiculous those arguments get, the faster the hamster has to spin its wheel. The more quickly come up with more rationalizations and justifications for why its nonsensical beliefs are correct. And while the subject of intellectual honesty is relevant to- My man is just, you're, you know you're just literally trying to create pseudo bullshit around the concept of self-delusion. Like we have words, like why are you, did you think you figured this out? Have you been, you have been hanging out on the internet for too long. Or do you think like this is new ground? These are revelations. You're describing circular logic, inductive over deductive reasoning and self delusion. What nay? I really, some people have a, some people have a poison lion in their head and the poison lion makes them do stuff to look cool, even though they might not look cool. And the poison lion, if you let him get in charge, like, then like, we were just like, okay, I had to listen to 15 minutes of this for you to describe hubris now. Like, <laughs> Bro, stop trying to talk to kids. Okay. Stop trying to talk to kids so much. Basically everything that deals with truth in any meaningful <laughs> Bro, I gotta bounce. I can't. This is the game this man. I need to say at least try it right. Okay. See you later, Shep. Sense. This is a problem that especially comes up with the field of economics. And for Celine Murphy reason, hamster. Is that <laughs> it's just bam 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 <laughs> Economics deals with scarcity, oh no, and scarcity tends to generate a lot of hurt feelings because everyone wants stuff and everyone feels like they should have stuff because they want stuff and yet there is not enough stuff to go around and that's not always fair and because it's not fair, the muh feelings almonds in the minds of the intellect. What is this? What? I, dude, fight me, please. I want to fight you now. I, I want to fight you in the marketplace of ideas. Please, I will, I will do it. I will do it. What is the Vosh thing? I'm not even defending it. What is that? What, who, I, I, like, Vosh has said some inf unfathomably and unprotectedly, like, I can't, I can't stand up for him, stupid shit. You know what I mean? But, like, what is that art? What, has he just said that? Like, equality is good, therefore equality is real? Like, who, who has made that? And why has it been brought up twice? Like, it's not that important, it's a meme. Like, then why did you say it twice? I'm so fascinated.
Funny time. Bunny searching for a little tree. Dude, get yourself a rabbit. Internet atheist evolved into economy bros. What did I miss? You, not much, man. Intellectually dishonest people whose hamsters have taken full dominance become perpetually activated. And there's I also appreciate scarcity bad getting poo pooed because people want stuff that they don't have. Like, scarcity is bad because scarcity is also how we define famine. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Do you not? Are you just starving to death in the Sahara? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> oh, sometimes people put their feels over reels in cases of drought. Like, what the fuck is this argument? The result of this is that a lot of the disagreements in the field of economics are not actually true disagreements at all. I mean, they are technically true disagreements. They're just not disagreements that you should actually be taking seriously. Because it's not coming from people who are thinking logically. It's coming from people who, well, the hamster's in control. But the what? This are, are we, we should, fucking. Fucking say something! The reality is, when the intellectual dishonesty is removed, a lot- Like, you gotta understand, like, I'm not taking your video seriously if you watch back through this, Mentis, because you just fucking took, like, a bunch of time to create new, shittier definitions of pre-existing concepts for four minutes over video game footage while not actually saying fucking anything. You could have just started with, the Webster Dictionary defines delusion as- the Webster's Dictionary defines the answer-begging question or circular logic as, and just fucking hopped to it, buddy. Shout out anyone who's fucking stupid enough to think they learned something from this. God damn. Oh, he's begging. Hold on, shut up. Give me a second. Give me a second. Come on, checkers. Dance. Dance, checkers. Dance. Are rabbits hard to take care of? Not if you're responsible is the real answer. Checkers, what you doing? Are you excited? Checkers. Oh. You know? Okay, he's just hanging out now. I thought he was going to fucking dance. Oh. He is, but now he's just doing it off screen. Sorry. If you guys pay enough attention, you'll see him flying around in the background, maybe. Child watches a Milton Friedman video once. <laughs> a lot of these economic concepts are, again, insanely easy to get. I'll just be using the subjective theory. What if they're actually as an not? Example. This theory is not quantum physics. It is not. Okay, hold on. Shut up. Subjective theory of value, definition, history, examples by these individuals from Investopedia. Well, there we go. What is the subjective theory of value? The subjective theory of value maintains that the value of an object is not fixed by the amount of resources and the hours of labor that went into creating it, but is variable according to its context and the perspective of its users. In fact, the theory argues the value of any object is determined by the individual who buys or sells it. This economic theory suggests that a product's value is decided by how scarce or useful it is to the individual. Um, I can see that working sometimes and not working other times. If you are going to um, create false scarcities <laughs> and try to market rig, this is probably something. This is like this is this is like a post hoc justification of things. I think really, um, it sells for what it sells for kind of vibe. I get you. In fact, even a child can grasp it, and I will prove it to you right now by explaining it in a way that even a third grader can understand. For instance, let's say that Remu here is tired of her other work and has decided to open up a pineapple farm. We're not going to ask how she got the money. Doesn't really matter. And to keep things simple, it's not really a big farm. It just has pineapples. Doesn't Gooner. Really else. Doesn't really grow any. Gooner. Gooner. Else. And to keep things even more simple, we'll just say that she's hired exactly one other local girl in order to help her out in the whole process of growing and then selling pineapples. Gooner. Here comes the tricky part. What do they sell the pineapples for? How much are the pineapples worth? Does Raymu get to say, well, hey, I put a lot of time and effort and money into these pineapples, so I'm just going to sell them for $100. Yep, that's right. $100 a pop because I say so. And then nobody buys the pineapples. And why did nobody buy her pineapples? Well, it's pretty simple because none of her potential customers at the farmer's market were willing to pay $100 for one freaking pineapple. This is because at the end of the day, the value is subjective. And what is it subjective to? The desires of man, which means that these goods are only worth what people are willing to pay for them. You don't just get to say that it's See, the issue with, like, subjective theory of value, though, is it kind of puts, like, it seems like it's not, like, it doesn't have a temporality to it. Because objectively, it was sold for what it was sold for, which now defines the market price of a thing, right? Market price changes based on scarcity, availability, all of that sort of stuff. I can understand the kind of idea of it. I don't know what the justification is for it. 
Um, obviously a hundred dollars is probably too much for a pineapple in today's market. Back in the day, people did used to sell pineapples for unfit, like small fortunes. I don't know if you guys know this, but the reason there's pineapples everywhere, um, on like her heraldry and stuff in throughout Europe is because it was really difficult to get pineapples and most other tropical fruits during the age of sale. And they would bring those fuckers from everywhere. So somebody could just say like, I have a foreign fruit. They'd pay massive amounts of money for them. I mean, yeah, that's just a way to, that's a way to assess the value of something, but also that's really just kind of a way to set like the market price. Do you know what I mean? Like that's an argument to it, but also like the subjective value, it's not really, it's not really very definitive. It's kind of just saying like things can be priced anyway. Like if you, if you strip the, the hoity toity logic from it, right. Um, or the, 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 the words that are around it, it's basically just saying like things are sold for what they're sold for. And so that's what their worth is, which is untrue. If it's post hoc justifying the cost of something by saying that's what it went for at market, then you can justify things like slave labor for it because you can say, well, like that's what a slave's worth. You know what I'm saying? Because like they were forced to be sold for that. Like Okay, technically it's true, but it doesn't really it doesn't really articulate much of anything. It's kind of just defining in a single incidence in the in like the supply chain and like the greater like economic system that exists and just kind of applying a definition to a thing that's just incidental to it and making it seem like it's justified. Is that not fucking crazy, right? Prices are a ransom and so is arbitrary random. Yeah, I mean like yeah, like money's made up. Is that what we're also like <laughs> this justifies money isn't real because money is also has a subjective value relative to like blah 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like I don't why is this okay, hold on, maybe There's I'm X amount of I should money. listen to more. I mean, well, sorry, you sorry. And technically it doesn't guarantee that anyone will buy it for that price. Saying that you're going to sell a pineapple for a hundred, a thousand dollars or whatever, that's not gonna magically manifest someone to come and give you a hundred dollars for your pineapple. It just doesn't work that way. What happens instead But also like you can do that. But but also like th here's the thing is that only works that only works literally when it works. I like, I don't know how to say this better. Like the system has to be in place where the subjective theory of value is accepted by everybody and put into play. Because if you just go to mercantilism, you just say, no, the value is what I say the value is. Like, you're just like, yeah, we, this is just, or am I saying, is it mercantile? Whatever, the old European way of doing it, where it's just like, no, f these things are always just worth $5. Like, it's just a set price for it. Like, it's a locked in price. Um, which you do for a lot of things, because if you permit a subjective theory of value, uh, like, I mean, like, which isn't even real, like, that's just, that's such a, that's just, it just is post hoc justifying an uncontrolled market, right? Like, that's literally what we're just saying. It's, there's a market that's uncontrolled and here's a whole like system of like, it's just additional words, words on top of words, which happens in fucking economics, economics economics all the time um if you change that then it's good like it, it's 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 kind of like saying like when i'm walking around outside of my house like i'm engaged in the theory of freedom of movement right like it, it, it's just adding stuff it doesn't need to really be there but i feel like it's drawing an extremely large amount of t attention onto the arbitrariness of value that exists before the purchase stage of a market transaction which is like Sort of, but like also it's wrong anyway, <laughs> you know. Um, this is it, it's it is a, what people are willing to pay for it. Some people are going to really like pineapples and they may even be willing to pay ten, fifteen dollars for a pineapple. Some people don't like pineapples at all and they won't buy it no matter what. They'll view it as trash, they don't even want it, and they don't even want to deal with the hassle of reselling it. And once you've evaluated a lot of customer needs and wants, what you're gonna find once you average things out and do some math is that there's gonna be a general price where you can sell these pineapples and most people will buy them and you'll still make some kind of decent profit. And that price is gonna be based entirely on the subjective demand for pineapples. That demand may be higher on some days and it might be lower on some other days. In other words, also so like this, this just fuck. Like we're talking about elastic demands too. Like so, we're, we're getting like, why are we? Why are we not? Well, why are we not talking about elastic demand? Why are we not talking about commodities? You know what I mean? Um, like inelastic demand. Like yeah, sure. Like pineapples specifically. 
whatever. But like also pineapple exports might like destroy a country. So like they have to like export X amount. And if it could be like added to the value of something like hyper simplifying something like economics is for dumb dumbs. You know what I mean? Like it, it's economics. It's, it's like a gigantic, the economy is never a real thing. Right? Like, there is no real American economy that can be cleanly separated from the economic realities of basically every other economy on earth. Maybe there are parts that aren't particularly, you know, really strong, like weak economies and stuff, but usually that's even just incidental to, like, you know, exploitation that happened back in the day. But uh, economics is just a worldwide thing. Unless there is no communication between two entities at all, like it is symbiotic, it is worldwide. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it, it's one of the most things that, like, the most possible to have a butterfly effect thing. It's kind of like a fungus, unironically, not in a bad way. Uh, mycological. Mycology can kind of explain this way better. There's root systems that connect everything. What we are experiencing sometimes as an economy, the economy of Lexington, Kentucky, the economy of Louisville, the economy of Kentucky itself, the economy of the eastern seaboard of America are just like articulated fruiting bodies of an organism that is extraordinarily expansive and subject at all points to stimuli, at all points that it touches. Because it, that's just natural to it, too, because you can't make shit in America that you sell in Japan and then be like, oh, I'm sorry, we're actually, we're not part of the same economy. This is like micro and macroeconomics. This is like, I, I feel like the, the, the premise is stupid at the beginning because the, the like, explaining, I could explain economics to a child is just fun, stupid as shit. Because you're not even explaining economics. You provided a singular definition for a subjective aspect of certain types of economic principles. Like, and it's also just like a theory theory, not even like a good scientific theory. It's an economic theory, which is like, we literally can't prove this. <laughs> we, it's, it, he just went into deductive and inductive reasoning and then just in, inductive reasoned himself straight into this thing you're doing the circular logic you're just presuming that what you said was correct and because what you said was correct you were right to say it like that we're, you're not providing real examples a hypothetical that um that contains the entirety of a singular transaction at a at one pineapple market on earth does not define economics you don't agree with that either because if i said communism 100 percent works because of this glass factory that existed in fucking uh zaveni oblast in fucking russia in 1945 everyone there lived with a pure like for that that these one this one series of transactions at a, at a microscope microscopic scale in terms of economics you know like they were good they did a planned economy at this glass factory everybody had everything that they needed to eat and it was like sorry, oh so well that doesn't really kind of take into all the well, are you taking into account anything more than just a singular transaction between two people with fucking pineapples no you're not you're not <laughs> you just you simplified something that's too simple that, that, that's too complex to be simplified it's it just quite it I, uh, you you can't break things down to a certain point uh, without destroying the nature of the thing that you're trying to describe after a certain part. It's like trying to describe a human by simply describing uh, an aspect of the follicle of your hair. Like humans are human because their hair is made out of, uh, what is it? Uh, chitinous cells, you know, whatever the fuck. Um, that, that are arranged in a scale pattern. Like, therefore, like, we can extrapolate out the correctness of this. Like, are you, how did you spend five fucking minutes, four minutes, whatever, talking about circular logic and then just do it? Sometimes people will really want pineapples and sometimes they won't. Because that's just- All value is perceived value desires. and perception is malleable and foolable. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, like, there's a sucker born every day. Uh, it, 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 it's a, it's a worthless, like the subjective theory of value. It's just worthless. 
Because like sometimes it's true and sometimes it's not. It's a theory. It's not predictive. You can just create a circumstance where it just doesn't work anymore. <laughs> you can just make people pay things. You can tell somebody, hey, bus tickets are always a dollar. The, the value is no longer subjective. Whether or not you want to pay a dollar, yeah, you know, it, then, then it's like, what, what value is this definition? If it doesn't predict price, if it doesn't predict price controls, if it doesn't predict behavior, then what, what fucking worth is it? You know, bus tickets are always a dollar. We did a calculation. We determined that it's an objective value. It's specifically what people will pay and we'll get the most return and the most amount of rides for its objective value. I might be charitable, but doesn't that shit only apply to markets like the stock market? I don't know. It's, stocks are fucking gibberish gambling bullshit anyway. Sometimes. If I fu- anybody, anybody that has like a, they're, they're certain, they're certain about the stock market and you're not worth $4 trillion because you can predict every fucking, you can predict every trade that's going to happen positively for your own fucking like back, like uh, your own dividends. Like th- wh- how much do you think you really know about something? It's like, yeah, I can tell you every single aspect of the game of Baccarat, but like, it's still just gambling. <laughs> I know how to, pl- I know how to play roulette. Okay. What you need to understand is roulette was invented in fucking the French court in 1620. I don't, I'm making this up in the French court in 1622. And if the ball lands here, that's a win. And if the ball lands here, that's a lose, but you can also bet this amount of this amount. Of this. These are how all the bets are done. Like, okay, you've described the game. Does that provide you any value? Are you a millionaire yet? Are you a billionaire? Well, some people are. I'm going to get there eventually. Like <laughs> anybody, the, what I'm trying to say, anybody that describes a scam and then falls for it afterwards is the wildest version of stupid. That, 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 that's just like, you just describe a Ponzi scheme and then you just like, just engage in one as the victim of a Ponzi scheme. It's incredible to me. I would never put money in the stock market. I just wouldn't. If I want to make money, I'll fucking make shit and then get hard returns. I'll just create IP. You know how much money I make off of or I, how much return I get on my IP? All of it is 100%. I thought thoughts and I put them into products and then I get return on them all the time until somebody's trying to fucking fuck with my IP. Then they got to get got. But like it's, it's a permanent return. It's a perm. It's a create. I'm, I can create property. It's fucking. It's a sick superpower in capitalism. <laughs> oh my god! Where does invading a sovereign country to force them uh, to buy our pineapples come in? Does it? I'm sorry. It was a very simple. We can explain it to a child. Like I, I know. Like I'm, I'm popping off here, but like, I, I listen to a lot of it, and there's nothing good so far. Times don't want things. Congratulations, we've just organically discovered the link between economics and basic human psychology. Amazing. And we've also discovered why to support- Is it really- have you discovered the link between economics and basic human psychology? (laughs) There's- there's a link between human psychology- I'm gonna blow your fucking mind, uh, Mentis- and every fucking thing that people do. Because psychology is the study of your brain's relation to sensory data. <laughs> if I can understand something, I can feel something about it. As a matter of fact, the, the second thing any person does after learning about something is develop an opinion about it. That is the fundamentals of psychology. Congratulations. I don't know why you said that like it was a, a stunning revelation. It's psychology. It's your, re- it's your relation to sensory data. Simplified. <laughs> Everything. All of it. <laughs> wow. Did you see when I played music that some people started paying attention to it? We've just discovered the link between psychology and music. <laughs> this guy saw a steak cooking and got hungry. We have discovered... The simple, de- there's this simple connection between biological need and cooking food. <laughs> and demand curve is often used to determine what the price of a good is going to be. And thus, what is the, what are these? Look at this. Fuck. Bro, do you not know? Do you not know how to just put the fucking curves in the right place? Or is this a, is this curve just like start naturally up in here? 
the classic supply and demand curve. Demu is going to find a sweet spot where she can price her pineapples in a way that she's not giving them away for free, but also not just letting them rot at the farmer's stand. And at the end of the day, that price is going to be based on the fact that there is some kind of subjective demand for it. And we can very... <sighs> the point... The real point, okay, here, let me get deeper into this. The reason why the subjective theory of value is like worthless in, in both, like, not even, this isn't like a leftist opinion. This would be worthless for rightists too. Unless you're trying to like fucking goober people, which I think this guy is, it's, you know, everything's gooner coded. So is, is because it doesn't, it, it's, it's non predictive. It doesn't provide, it just says people will feel a way about the prices of things, but it ignores the fact that that subjective reality will change based on objective market conditions. So you, you can just not say that ever because people feeling a way about something and trying to accommodate a system is like such a natural reaction to all things. It's like saying, like, I, 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 let me boil this down a little bit for you. So the uh, subjective theory of value is about as insightful as saying your knees bend when you sit in a chair because of course they do. It's a fucking chair. <laughs> like, what is this meant to articulate? It's so weird that there's a definition there that I guess lets you just focus on all of the uh, one specific aspect, desire. <laughs> I guess, is this demand side economics? Is that what this is supposed to be? But like objective market realities will change the, how people feel about it, which is much more interesting to talk about and include so many more var variables than I grew a fucking pineapple. What if there is a pineapple disaster? What if there is a guy who's actively speaking bad about pineapples? These are like measurable objective things that you can change and predict the, 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 the effect on people via the psychology and economics. Like why, why would you not just try to have this, like even you like mentors, like unless you're trying to fucking literally goober people, why would you not be trying to have this conversation from that standpoint? I know, I know it's because you're trying to gooner glaze our boy Asmongold. I know I for, I forgot that that's the point of this video because I'm so fucking distracted, but like my God, my God. <laughs> Nope, I just straight leg chairs roll like a fucking Barbie doll, just everybody. Kink. You know? Even that definition. But what is a chair? I'm sorry, sir, but have you can have you considered the Japanese kotatsu table? <laughs> Whatever the fuck that thing's called. Very, very easily prove this with some really basic reasoning skills. For instance, let's pretend that one day. Stop chuckling, bro. They hate pineapple. You should not be you should not be this confident that you're fucking doing little chuckles and shit with some really basic reasoning skills. For instance, let's pretend that one day everyone decides that they hate pineapples. For whatever strange reason, nobody's interested in pineapples from this day forward. Nobody wants to buy them, nobody wants to eat them. So now with the demand part of this curve taken away, what is the price of pineapples? Well, now that nobody values pineapples anymore and the subjective valuation is thus completely gone this graph ceases to make any sense because the pineapples have no value it drops to zero or in other words if nobody wants to buy something then that something's value is zero it does not matter how much work and how much investment Viremu put into her pineapple farm if nobody wants to buy her pineapples anymore tough cookies you can pump that supply and claim it's worth whatever as much as you want if the demand isn't there too bad value does dumb dumb point to make bad point to make corn subsidies have <laughs> corn subsidies have entered the con conversation. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, not only can you sell something for which there is no uh, personal, like th this is by the way, articulating demand specifically as consumer side demand, which is the issue with some, okay, so let me, okay, hold on. All right, hold on. I don't like, I don't like supply and demand <laughs> economics. <laughs> uh, I think supply and demand are weighted terms um, for most people because they only understand them in the strictest like sense. I think that uh, in my mind, when you're trying to articulate this uh, kind of like have and <laughs> supply and demand is a pretty good way to articulate the two sides, the basically the polarity of market forces. But I think the better way to describe it 
is actually through uh, problem solution, right? There are problems that occur economically, and there are solutions that are provided to solve that problem. One, this works way more often too, because we run into issues like this because of just the nature of linguistics. It can mean supply, demand can mean a lot of different things. What he's articulating in this context is have I, has he gotten to the Asmongold portion yet? No, my man's given an entire primer on on fucking economics, so I've got to like talk about that. I can't let him establish false premises and then like proceed into the argument. Um, with the issue with supplies, like what he's articulating here or demand is he's articulating specifically like consumer demand, which is consumer desire, especially like relative to something like a pineapple would be like the popularity of pineapple. Say that there was. Um, a thing that happened in Australia, actually, a few years ago, I think it was Australia, is some asshole put a needle in strawberries, in a strawberry at a market, right? They put a needle in a strawberry at a market, which tanked the entire strawberry market because people suddenly did not want strawberries anymore because everyone was afraid that there would be a needle in the strawberry. This is one of the reasons that there's ag gag laws is because people are hyper reactionary. Now that assumes that the demand is strictly relative to the consumer. However, there exists also a demand on the supplier side, a demand to sell this, right? You can flip it. You can actually, it's an inverted cord and say that there's another demand, which is to offload product and that you need more supply <laughs> of consumer demand uh, or of purchase, right? So you can bypass the consumer demand and just create new synthetic demand. Synthetic demand being something like corn subsidies. One of the biggest reasons so many people grow corn in America is because corn is subsidized. It's one of the staple crops of America. It's one of the things that grows throughout the most of America and you can make shitloads of it. And so we turn it into uh, corn syrup, oil, hydrogenated this and that all kinds of different shit come from corn. Um, that doesn't mean that people want it. Uh, how often do you eat canned corn? You know what I mean? How often do you use cornmeal and stuff? This is not a question from my Latino listeners, by the way, how often uh, do you actually seek out like, Oh fuck, I really want corn syrup in something. Never, never. Basically, you know, maybe you eat corn on the cob a few times in a day, but if you drive through the Midwest, motherfucker, corn is everywhere, 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 everywhere. And it's subsidized because there is a demand for the, from the farmers to, for the government to supply subsidies, which will not fit cleanly into this. And like, what? it does count. Cause it's just what happened. This is an objective reality. That's it. And it keeps these fucking communities and these farms alive. Subsidies for all sorts of, well, I don't like subsidies. Well, eat shit, you dummy. The adults are talking. Okay. Which is why I think in economics, problem solution is a better way to articulate the dichotomy. But so many people want to charge economic conversations with emotional language. I mean, everything that this guy has been talking for a dude that's like hamster wheel, hamster wheel, hamster wheel. He's really working hard to make you feel like uh, the anime girls a fucking moron, right? He's trying to make you feel a certain way this entire time. These aren't just logical. Let me, let me just see it from it. No, he's just trying to make you feel callous. It's not, it's not intellectual distance and um, objective observation, it's just raw callousness um, it's superimposed as, as faux intellectualism, which is what we're, what, what, what's occurring here. All right, stayed up way too long. I need to wake up in three hours for work. I'll be back for Vod Gang. See you guys later. How oh, the pineapples are glued to her skirt. Oh, yeah, this is, it's dog shit. So, uh, same reason we don't have single-payer healthcare in the USA. If we got that, too, too many workers would be would leave their jobs. It's just too much speculation for the market to bear. It's sort of kind of, yeah, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but like with your, the end of your premise, you know? Um, but yeah, basically. Um, so what the, what the demand is in economics is rarely actually consumer demand, especially when you get to America, you don't want to hear bad pop music. And yet you do. Why is that? Because the demand 
that's greater than your demand is the demand to have that shit played for people because it hits the largest amount. We already live in a controlled economy and it is the biggest economy that has ever existed. Planned economics or ec top-down economic planning exists throughout America. America is not... I'm sorry to say... I'm going to take this off because my head is actually getting super hot. I I'm sweating right now. God, that's what... I think, I think he wore the... Alex Jones wore them too many times. His brain's cooking. Tyler, why is that pineapple part of her hip? And the double stack pineapple is also silly. Uh, this looks like shit. I'm sorry. Can I? It's not come from her hired help either. Hold on. But he wants to buy it. We'll just, we'll just scoot back and look at this absolute non thing. Fuck, what was I saying? Um, but yeah, like the, his, his hyper simplistic and like emotionally charged explanation of economics doesn't explain anything that's a, just a real reality. Oh, I know what I was saying. Um, America, despite what lefties, some lefties would like to believe is not laissez-faire capitalism. The capitalism you're most upset about, it, it can't exist. Laissez-faire capitalism is an impossible utopic concept, unironically, because you just have to have controls at some point that will like regulate things because true laissez-faire capitalism should permit you to rob somebody. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not the definition. Dude, laissez-faire means hands off. It means hands off capital. Literally, you can't regulate shit. Well, I mean, maybe some people should get together and have a gentleman's agreement uh, in some specialized libertarian courts. Like, no, that is regulation. You are just now the new government. There's no such thing as laissez faire capitalism. True capitalism cannot actually exist. True free markets are an impossibility. Uh, just the way that more than likely the utopic notion of true communism is is a fucking pipe dream um it, it's just it requires too much um of the human animal to to be able to achieve long term uh, which is why so many uh with all due respect to my um uh, my hyper lefties in chat uh which is why so many planned economies had to engage in small amounts of genocide in order to kind of make the numbers work what America is, is a series of mixed economies, tons of them. Walmart is its own economy. If you guys don't know this, Walmart is not just its own economy. Walmart is a planned economy, top down. It is not a capitalist institution internally. They control the means and method of production. They don't give it to the workers, but the owners of it are basically like unilaterally control everything from the ground up. They plan the price of things. They control the markets, what they're going to sell them for, what they will be produced for all the way top to bottom to the point where they will like buy people. They'll be like, all right, hey, we are going to start selling your hand soap, but you are no longer going to produce it where you thought you were going to produce it. We have a manufacturing center and we're going to produce it there and we're going to ship it from there because that is going to meet our expectations for cost. That is a, that's the, all the plans, all the plans planned economy but it is part of a larger non-planned economy because economics is hyper complicated and it works you know what i'm saying it doesn't work necessarily for the benefit of everybody but it does fucking work there is no such thing as pure egalitarian capitalism where everybody has an equal buy-in because first off we're not all equal all right first off not everybody's american Okay, and I get to eat first because I'm an American. All right, nationalism, cruelty, viciousness. We sit at the table, we get to have our fill, and then other people get to eat too, right? The Chinese, then maybe like the Canadians and the British, and then whatever, other countries with names that I'm not going to fucking bring up immediately. There's the G6, and then there's everyone else. That, that's not egalitarian. So that just naturally requires people to already fucking operate off of a deficit deficit, which means there isn't an egalitarian market, which means people's concerns over the prices of things are not based in just simple internal desire. There's much more complex things at, 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 at hand. And so saying the subjective value of something determines the value of something is just uh, an, an absurdity. It, it's a non, a non definition. It's like, of course it does, but also it could not. You know what I mean? <laughs> you might as well say the sun is warm, except for when it's not in the sky. Like, okay. <laughs> Wondrous insight as usual from someone with a business degree. <laughs> What's that title? They even tried to turn itself into a closed economy. Walmart tried to push people into using Walmart as a bank to get discounts, but got clapped. Yeah. Planned, planned economies, by the way, are fantastic. 
at small scale planned economy, small scale being like a thousand ish people to like 10,000 ish people. Those are very arbitrary numbers, but like a small scale uh, controlled economies at that, like fully planned economies are f- wonderful, 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 wonderful. What do you, that's what fucking um, company stores are. It's a planned economy, a microscopic planned economy that's separate from the economics that are going around it. It's, it's socialism. It's communism. It's literally a community. It's communal things where you just have to provide work credits in order to get exchange, and it's all contained. But the thing is, is that um, controlled economy that exploits labor, right, is part of another system where it can offset the labor demands that it didn't meet, right? Like typically labor would be like, hey, I need X amount in order to operate. It decreased that. And so now its overall share can be higher. Like, I don't think I'm being highly controversial. This isn't me being like uh, the worst communist hyper lefty ever. I'm not over here fucking workers of the world unite necessarily. I just said that company stores are communism because in a way they fucking are. That's just... The principle that they were built on, they're just hyper labor exploitive. Like you can be communist, technically planned economy style and still exploit labor. It happens. It happened in every fucking like (laughs) all of the Soviet Union and shit. They had they had moments. They had good moments. They had bad moments because people are people. The second someone can take advantage of that situation, they probably will, which is why you need to have. Mixed economies are generally the best ones, in my opinion, looking from the outside. Laissez-faire is equal Silk Road. That's about it. Oh, you mean that's... That doesn't mean... That's not what laissez-faire means. That's just... The Silk Road was laissez-faire. And even laissez-faire, microeconomic laissez-faire, hands-off economies, also work very well. Inside the greater mixed economy, farmers markets and stuff, you know, are for the most part extremely, this is why he used pineapples. Those are extremely open, free reign, uh, hands off places, right? You can fucking do under the, I mean, real farmers markets, not necessarily the one that's in your like downtown area. I mean, if you head out, you know, off fucking rural route 50 and you find fucking farmer John and like the rest of the crew from fucking first Calvary Baptist, out there in the parking lot, they're not paying taxes on it. They're doing free exchange and just saying like, Hey man, I got fucking 15 extra cabbages. I'll give you like, I'll give you 10 of them for like five pounds of potatoes and $16. Like that's like, that's what capitalists think or try to articulate that extent large scale capitalism will like end up in a free trade. But like that can only work inside the greater understanding that you're inside of a a massive mixed economy that has certain protections and shit that provides your ability to meet in the parking lot of first Calvary Baptist at all. It's extremely complicated. You cannot boil it down. There's reasons that it's that, that the people with advanced, advanced, advanced degrees in this are still just at each other's throats and don't agree. These are not theories in the sense of like the theory of fucking heliocentrism. These are theories as in like, a game theory like they're they're soft they're as soft as soft science can get economics tries to pretend to be a hard science but economics is indistinguishable in fucking distinguishable when you try to delve into it from fucking any pseudoscience bullshit that you run into it is so hard this is one of my biggest gripes with it which is why i don't trust anyone that's like a hundred percent certain on stuff Uh, In economics, I just don't trust because trying to delve through the 50 inch thick layer of fat that is the propaganda layered over the top of every fucking bit of economic conversation, shit that is as simplistic and childish as this to, you know, long range, high, high intensity. We paid a shitload of money to do the propaganda stuff. Um, to try to convince people that, I don't know, like just the word socialism is so bad that you will literally starve to death and experience German post-World War II hyperinflation because like you elected someone who went to a socialist meeting one time, like they're, they're ticking time bombs. I'll tell you what, (laughs) 
You let one of them in Congress, 15 more will show up. Like, it, it, it's a thick, dense, non-fact-filled pseudoscience that is people desperately trying to articulate what they see while also impressing the people that pay them to see a specific part of it. Everybody that's paid for deep discoveries into the field of economics are just fucking, uh, what do you call them? Theory shoppers or opinion shoppers like Donald Trump. All right, I know you said I can't do that, but what if uh, I asked another guy down the street? He said, maybe I could. <laughs> Socialism, you mean insurance? Basically. Markets require regulation. Yeah, 100%. 100 it, it, it requires regulation off rip so hard that like you have to actively change the de definition of what regulation means. When you apply a law to anything, it's been regulated, even just a little bit. Even if it's not an efficient regulation, it's still regulated. That's just, it's just, that's what it is. The presence of regulations is regulation. <laughs> oh, that, you've just engaged in circular logic. That's a silly, what is it? What well, do they love to say? That. That's a tautology. <laughs> no, it's just, that's not a tautology. That's just the different version of the word. It's just, it, it's just the word with the suffix on it. Theory crafters, opinion shopper is what I meant to say. I heard that word the other day and it was great. This is exactly why Marx and Engels developed material dialectics. They were trying uh, to tie economics to hard sciences, which is a, a noble goal. And unironically, like one of the best, one of the best things to come from the entire theory of Marxism. This guy is engaging in it right now. He's just trying to pretend like he's not because like they'll, you'll, they'll never give Marx a second look. But fundamentally, starting in the material world, observing the material conditions, applying a uh, hypothesis to it, testing the hypothesis, and then judging the results by the material reality that arrives after this in a singular chain and just accepting the results and deducting um, the deducting the other possibilities from what would be like, you have to remove other extent possibilities instead of just trying to say, well, it looks like, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck and it walks like a duck, it certainly could not be a goose. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> inductive requires you to accept other people's subjective assessments of sensory data, whereas deductive allows someone else to repeat the quest that you went on so to say to arrive at your final supposition at your final explanation of stuff uh regulation like you can't sell rotten fish they always say that that's not a thing and then it's just like but upton sinclair's the jungle <laughs> perfect counter example or tough cookies you okay can hold on. that supply and claim it's worth whatever as much as you want if the demand isn't there too bad value does not no it's not too bad either the value of her labor interestingly enough is also based on the supply and demand curve when it comes to selling your labor and since pineapples aren't worth anything anymore well that unfortunately means that poor Ramu now has to close down her pineapple farm and now her helper is going to have to find somewhere do else. you guys understand like once i explained the issue with the concept of demand quote unquote and the singularity necessarily of it how kind of worthless it is it get once you start hearing it that way it just start, it really starts falling apart because you're just trying to articulate it from one direction, but there's, it, it implies the existence of a singular demand, which doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? Like you can have multiple markets, you can have multiple supply. It, it, it's just so overly simplistic that it, it defines nothing. Else to work is again, the profits aren't coming from some surplus labor value like a communist or a socialist would tell you. Her profits are ultimately- Hey Tyler, do you got any thesaurus wrecks like Garner's? I never use a thesaurus. Um, <sighs> I, I, it's not a flex either. I just know all the words generally. The only time I use a thesaurus is when I'm trying to bypass my brain damage. If you guys ever, you guys will see, I, more than likely you've seen me have literal mental hiccups where I'm like, and I, I, I lose stuff. I will know the definition of the word I'm trying to say. And I can't remember the word. I can't like literally pull it back out. That's usually the only time I use a thesaurus and I just use whatever, like an internet online search one because I know the word. I just literally can't materialize it in my head. Um, and so I just like, I, I basically inverse search it. So instead of searching like, what is the meaning of word? I type in the meaning of the word and then get the thesaurus result out. But I don't, I don't use any of them. I, I don't, I, I respect the existence of thesauruses. Um, I have never needed one 
and I don't, I don't know how to even qualify one value wise because I, I don't, I know that there's like rhyming thesauruses, you know, and then there's like, um, not rhyming thesauruses. <laughs> there's thesauruses for like different, um, disciplines. So I guess like just type into Google the discipline you're trying to find a thesaurus for and then go for it. But like, not only can I not use one, I don't like them um, in a general sense. Not like I'd like judge people for using them, but I find them extraordinarily distracting. Like I've, I looked through one, like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I experimented with thesauruses back when I was in like high school and stuff. Because I was like, I should look in this. I always look in the dictionary. Like when I was a kid, I was a fucking, I'm just curious. So like I would hear, I remember the first word I ever looked up. First word I ever looked up, like, because I had to know. I was watching Extreme Ghostbusters back when that was out. I was probably like seven or eight years old. And I was at my grandma's house and they used the word, word ion. I-O-N, ion. And I freaked the fuck out about it. Because I was like, I don't know what that word means. Went home, pulled out my big plasticky dictionary gigantic fucking one with all the little wedges cut out into it. And I looked up ions and then ions made me look up protons. And then I started looking up nucle nucleuses and then nucleotides. And I just sat reading the dictionary for like probably fucking an hour or so like that. Cause the, the, it was a stunning revelation how much knowledge was in the dictionary because until you want to know a word, you might not understand that you could want to know other words. And then I did. So like, yeah, I was the kid that was reading the dictionary. It's not like an impressive thing. It's more like a, uh, an aspect of being acoustic, I think. <laughs> I, this is not a thing that impresses me about myself. Um, I'm happy that I did it because it works with my existence, but it's kind of like, I don't know, somebody that's really good at like sports going to the gym. You know, it, it's just like a, a thing that happens. But yeah, with the sources, I find them to be very limited in use. Um, also because... If you don't know the words, you can get really lost because uh, the sources don't always have the definitions and people don't know to look them up. So I would say just forgo a thesaurus entirely and unless you're trying to cheat your vocabulary up, which, you know, hey, go for it. That's what I would use it for if I had to use it for something. I don't. But use a dictionary instead, um, because then you can actually learn the definitions of the words and not have a moment like George W. Bush. Uh, when he was writing, um, I believe it was his Harvard admissions essay and he articulated a thought that was basically the lacerations ran down my cheeks because he didn't know the word lacerations and what it meant and mistake mistook it for tears. He was trying to find, he was using a thesaurus to find a better word for tears, um, and mistook it for tears and wrote in lacerations, which is just a fire mistake. Unless he's like really fucking high power acoustic. And then he, he's actually trying to say lacrimations, which is wild. If that's the case, then George W. Bush actually is fuck insanely based. <laughs> I too read the dictionary partially, potentially because of autism, maybe, but also because me and the folks were the first gen immigrants. And that was one of the only books they had. If you want to speak better, any language, get a dictionary for it. Because there's no better word, way to learn a word than to see the word and its definition and how it's spelled and pronounced. I don't know how, I don't know a better way to articulate that, but if you want to learn words, the book that's full of words, their meanings, pronunciation and spelling and alternative spellings and all of their different verb and noun forms or whatever is the best resource. <laughs> it's also much nicer to have a paper dictionary if you're doing stuff like that because just kind of flipping around in one and just fucking around and reading stuff can be like extremely informative it's just a good practice if you want to build your vocabulary i know it's fucking nuts but just like read read dictionaries a bit like have one at at hand um i don't need one as much as i used to i still use stuff but generally i know most of the words in the English language, or I know enough of them, uh, enough of the way that it's constructed, where if you say a word, I can still more than likely put together its meaning based on how it's constructed. Cause it's just made out of other words, which is just the last trick that you learn when it, when you, when it comes to knowing how English works, 
it's not special. You can you can do it too. Just go fucking practice. It's like being impressed by a pull up. Like okay, yeah, you can't do one, but just go and do it and practice, and then you'll do it. That's it. Um, so like usually when I have to look up anything, it's either to remember something I've forgot, double check to make sure I'm correct. Usually it's double checking to make sure I'm correct in the usage because sometimes so many words are just constructed very similarly or they're like they're a letter off or like a pronunciation off. Or sometimes I've only read them and I've never actually heard them said and I have to double check and make sure it's the word. I, the word slough, S-L-O-U-G-H. I never really heard it pronounced until I was in like my late 20s and I thought it was slow, S-L-O-U-G-H, which is a very reasonable mispronunciation. And then I said that in front of my wife and she made fun of me. She's still making fun of me for it to this day. Um, she says, you're slow. Stupid fucking pun, pun saying bitch. I mean, she's killing me. Murders. She murders me over pronunciation. Smarter than me by far. Better at better at English tremendous editor very talented um but yeah and then the uh the third one is looking up words that are extraordinarily complicated that you know uh it, it, it's something that's specific to usually a high-end advanced degree discipline or something you know what i mean like the specific you know some weird bit of jurisprudence uh chemical names and symbols you know i don't know what trimethylphenidate whatever the fuck you know what i mean like i well, actually i do know what methylphenidate is that's my concerted prescription but um you know you, you i don't have to get into it advanced like high level chemical compounds shit like that extraordinarily esoteric terms um and you can still learn words all the time it's just uh, by the time you get to right around where i am words wise you got to take it easy learning new ones because you'll want to use them and no one's no one's interested in hearing them. <laughs> kind of a waste of effort. Slough like enough, yes. That's called reader's accent. Moore's was the one that got me. Moore's? Moore's? He went to that boarding school Nazi factory in Mass Phillips Academy. What the hell? I, until 10 seconds ago, thought it was an O sound like smog. Smog. No, it's slough. Isn't that doesn't that fuck doesn't that hurt? If you if you're like me, doesn't that fucking hurt? I gotta my wife, I'll ask her. She has a mental list of my mistakes that goes back since we met each other. <laughs> and she'll she recalls a lot of the like I didn't pronounce it right, and I'll say it because she's like it's especially she's like it's especially jarring because you're like really good at writing and you like know the definitions and then when you just say a word completely wrong it just completely like detracts whatever we're doing at the moment slough terror versus tear shout out everybody who's a first time language or english language learner that comes up across fucking tear and tear her employer being able to pay her, which requires the business to be producing something that people are again actually willing to buy, and since people aren't willing to buy, not true. In this hypothetical world, it's just uh, like this is this is this is circular logic. By the way, he's just these are these are assumptions. These are literal assumptions that he is predicating his entire argument on being correct because he's inducing that it's correct, which is I'm fire. And another thing to do. PLDR extremely over. Mentis is profoundly fucking awesomely stupid. And thus man is only willing to trade for things that he actually wants. Things do not just magically have value all their own. For example, imagine if the universe was completely devoid of life. Every single planet in the universe is just an empty, barren world. What purpose does this universe have? What value does this universe have? Well, assuming that you can't somehow slip into this universe and steal its resources and then sell it in a universe where life actually does exist, the value of this isolated, lifeless world is, well, zero. Because value ultimately comes from those of us with a conscious will to give things value without but like i i hate that he went on are you just saying that a place that doesn't have an economy will not will not naturally create economic value stunning insight living thinking things to ponder and decide what they want and what they don't want it doesn't really matter what this hypothetical lifeless universe has in the does it. And for all we know this you don't even have to do that you don't have to go to a lifeless universe you can just say in in prehistoric like in the age of the dinosaurs, when there were no economies, what was the economic value of anything? It was zero. Nothing had any trade value. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about?
<laughs> and then like, uh, but, but, but I'm sorry. It, this is how fucking stupid your definition is, by the way. But I'm sorry. Uh, maybe dinosaurs felt value in plants and stuff. Okay, so let's just re-exist into your uh, fictional universe that is devoid of life yet still has resources. Do is there not value in fucking electron transfer? Is there not a natural economy at the size of atoms? That is just going on. Are you to say that the electron has no value? As a matter of fact, it does. It has a constant, an objective value, which determines the the makeup of the molecules that it's a part of. This is this is this is the fundamentals of atomic sciences and chemistry. Fuck me. Holy shit. It's like these fucking systems actually have an extant existence aside from just how you feel about them. Maybe the way that you feel about things is affecting your ability to provide accurate and predictive definitions. <laughs> this hypothetical universe could actually exist in an alternative dimension somewhere, but it ultimately doesn't matter. There's no one to give it purpose. What are his arguments against Vosh and Adam? Something's how crazy their analogies are and dude just made up a universe. By thinking living beings. And without that, the entire universe might as well just melt into nothingness because no one would be around to know the difference. And this is all, again, pretty easy to figure out. If no one's willing to buy your pineapple, you're not really going to be selling it for a thousand dollars or whatever. Again, yeah, you are. What if? What if you can create a fake world? What if you just put a fucking, uh, what if you just put a gun to the person's head? Hey, you're going to buy this fucking pineapple for a thousand dollars. Oh, that, that's a crazy, that's just fucking happens. All right. It, if you're a libertarian, you know, it does because that's use of state force to enforce, uh, market economies and shit. It just exists. It's just a thing that happens. It's a possibility. Like, why are you not getting into it? Why must you oversimplify things? Also, holy fuck. He, st he hasn't gotten to it. I've got to talk about the child him. can understand this. And yet, there is still a debate. And why is that? Well, because often the business owner ends up making more money than the laborer does. And that's not equality. That's not fair. That feels bad. This is oh, the man. third time. Did this guy actually debate Vosh and just get fucking his whole back blown out? I know this guy would be like, well, that's like stretching my analogy. Oh, is it? So I'm sorry. I can't answer your what if with another what if. How how rude of me. <laughs> it's activated. Error, error, NPC script, NPC script, critical fault. Truth is not aligning with my truth. Hamster wheel on. Bro, I got to tell you, this is fu you're fu this is you're weak in your heart, bro. <laughs> this is the saddest shit in the world. Does Vosh even know you exist? Cuz this is the third time you've brought up your handmade um, what, straw man, like literally, you have a handmade straw man that you put up here as a fucking like a a, a signal call. <laughs> everybody, 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 Vosh wrong, Vosh wrong, Vosh wrong. You're the NPC. You're the NPC. You have a natural fucking reaction point. Somebody say thing. You put up picture of Vosh. Pee pants. Ask mom for nuggies. You're the NPC. You're the one that's not real. He's Mom, not real, Scoob. He keeps putting up pictures, of, pictures of Vosh. Of once you realize where the value is actually coming from, you realize that without any kind of profit, the laborer wouldn't be able to work there either because there would be no incentive for the business to even exist. Yeah. You know what? Sometimes laborers do labor without money. Here's is, that what, is that the point here's he the made? It doesn't Sorry, matter it. because the hamster has decided so. Is this your hamster, though? Because if this is your hamster and you're actually just filming your real hamster, that's kind of cute. spins and the... You realize that without any kind of profit, the laborer wouldn't be able to work there either because there would be no incentive for the business to even exist. But here's the fun thing. Here's the kicker. It doesn't matter because the hamster has decided so. The hamster but that's also stupid because that, that's just fun. That's a fun, that's your it's it's logical, circular logic, right? There are businesses that are non they're first off. They're just called they're just called nonprofits. I, I don't know if do, if do I have to hand there's just there's just there's just fucking businesses that are called non-profits. But that's not exactly what I said. It's not exactly what he was talking about. He meant, he meant before the worker gets paid. Okay, there's also things called charities. Where people provide free labor. They provide literal free labor to do stuff. My father-in-law works for Habitat for Humanity. Like, he volunteers labor to a corporation in order to build houses for people. That is literally an objective annihilation of your entire point. You have to move the goalpost now because the one you established is just fucking wrong. You're just, you're just saying shit, bro. This is, 
This is little kid this brain stuff. This is movies. wild. So that's why you see shout out, movies. shout out when you fucking decide to make a picture of me with a little, a little triangle nose. Also, I made a better version of that. Do you guys have you guys ever seen that? Hold on, I just got to point this out because I've also stolen that one Voss shouting picture and made a uh, and made a thing. Let me let me hold on. That's why it's sticking to my craw, my craw. Thumbnails. It should be in thumbnails. Isn't the used? This is an unreleased video that I'd ever put out because I wasn't a hundred percent sure on it. Don't tell me it's gone. This is from this is from back when I started the channel too. Oh, it might be just lost somewhere. Oh, sad. I think it's just lost. Oh man, that sucks. Hold on, hold on. Let me sort it by time. Day created. There's the menu. Okay, yeah, it's just lost somewhere. Fuck. That was a good one. Never mind. Normally I have a really good one of that Bosch thing that I also messed not with. Not dimwitted people coming up with really, really silly arguments to defend the labor theory of value. For instance, I saw a debate between Liquid Zulu and President Sunday. And some <laughs> Whenever someone says nonprofit, I just remember the King of the Hill episode. What's all this money still doing in the register? That's profit. But we're a nonprofit. No, it's uh, it, the nonprofits are based on like the state. Uh, what is it called? Is it negative accounting? I can't remember. But basically, it's a plan, type of planned economy. It's 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 a nonprofit. It's the same way that states do their uh, state entities, federal entities, whatever, do their budgeting. They actually have all of the money that they are going to take in for the year planned ahead of time because you only get so much money from taxes. You're not going to have a more or less like bountiful year unless you do your planning wrong. And so you break down your accounting to the, to the zero. So it's like to zero accounting. There is a specific word for this. I just can't remember at the top of my head, but I had to go over this. I, I, I did budget break. So Jacob about economics. I've done budget breakdowns for large municipalities and smaller ones. <laughs> I read my city's budget and I know what things get spent on. I know how much the cops are getting paid. You don't cause you're stupid. Um, but that's how that works for profit. Right. Um, is just the easier way to easier way to balance your books. You just have to make more than you spend basically. Um, and then once you've, uh, once you've accommodated all of your operating costs, then everything left over is profit for the next stage really of accounting. So there's always a series of aspects of profit, right? It, it profit is a relative term unironically, um, because your $10 of profit that you get from off, off the, you know, so you have a net sale, right? The gross counts for your, the distribution costs and the production cost of a t-shirt. It's a $10 t-shirt, um, that you, you sell it for $10. The production costs are six. That's $4 profit or $4 net off of that. But then you have to go into like your own personal accounting. Once you pay for whatever artist royalty, this, that, that, and the other, your own time. Then what you have left over that is like a, a dollar of profit, but then like the, so it, it 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 at what point it becomes profit is just relative to how you're describing it, you know. So yeah, you profited off the sale at the nonprofit because that's additional money left over, but that money that's in the register in King of the Hill is going to go to pay the workers at the nonprofit. Obviously, it's money over the cost of the vegetable or whatever that's being sold, you know, the vegetables inherent cost is a dollar 50, right? It gets sold for a dollar 50, uh, or it, it gets produced for a dollar 50. It gets sold at the market for $2. There's going to be 50 cents left in the till, obviously. But then after that, you're going to fucking break it all down. What a nonprofit does is articulates all of that. Or one of the different ways of doing accounting for it is to basically make sure that all of the money that's taken in by the nonprofit goes to, um, whatever the stated, if it's like a 5013C, I think it's specifically, it has to go to the stated goal is X amount of the nonprofit kind of deal. But basically you can't have additional money left over at the end of the year. That's excess. It just has to get put back into the building. You can still run co-ops and stuff and other di different, um, organizations, you know, business organizations as a nonprofit on your own. Like you could start up a, a co-op, a nonprofit co-op, 
which basically means that you're not trying to create overhead. So you say like, all right, what we need to operate this year is $5, $10 total income. I'm just using simple numbers. We need $10 total income because that's going to cover $4 of production costs and $6 of labor costs and, you know, whatever fractional percent of additional, whatever, $6 operating, $4 production. That way I can just simplify this for you. If you instead at the end of the year turn out with $12, right? Instead of leaving that money over in a taxable way, right? If you're, if you're set up, however, you can tell the government, like we are not maintaining that money to keep it as like a personal profit of the owner of the company. You can just redisperse it into the pockets of the workers. You can give bonuses. You can do stuff like put it in like a, a, like a rainy day holdover account, I think is a possible thing that you can do to a certain amount, which isn't like we're holding on to that money and we're going to use it to pay shareholders, Instead, it's like we're going to put that money in a, a secure account as just basically like slush padding for any issues that might come up in the next year, which is just, you know, it, it, it's just seed grain. There's a lot of different ways to handle accounting. Um, basically, I think most of the non I think those basically if you can if you can build a successful business without having to worry about the parasitic existence of a fucking um, investor just draining blood from your neck the entire time, 100% go for that. Because investors provide literally nothing except for sometimes seed capital. And um, uh, what's his name? Pirate Software went over this in a very perfectly concise and explicit way. But if they don't provide more value to you than their investment will cost you, then don't ever get an investment. It's just literally not worth it. Because you'll have people that will like over leverage your company. They'll put like, they'll be like, hey, you're doing great. You're worth a million five right now, 1.5 mil. That's fucking awesome. But your like take home profit at the end of the year for you and your pocket is only like an additional $20,000, you know, on top of your own labor cost. What if we gave you seed capital to expand? This is usually, by the way, if you ever start a business, this is how you, uh, act, actual real corporate. I'm sorry, I'm getting into real economic stock. I was, I'm a little bit, uh, Mentis. If you're still watching, I am so sorry because this is just gonna uh, completely leave you behind in the fucking. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, they they might not go over this at the fucking nursery school that you 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 fucking have to get your 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 grilled cheeses from. Um, the way that they fuck you is they come in, I've seen this happen to a number of different people in a number of different ways. One of the most notable ones was a guy that owned a fucking hot dog stand. They obliterated him. Um, scale. Scaling is the thing that you do after you kind of have healthily established your small business. You might notice you're like, in my city, there's like a bunch of places I like to eat. One of them has three locations, but it's still a local place, but it's still like kind of a local chain. That is scale. When they add those new stores up, when they add employees, right, whatever, that's scaling at different levels. What major companies will do, investment companies, is they will come to you and offer you a huge amount of money to scale your business. Wow, you've done really great in a local market. We think that we could take you nationwide. What we're going to need from you is all of this shit. You see this on Shark Tank and stuff. So what they want in return is just an insane amount of equity and they lend you the money. So you don't even get the money. They're basically saying, give me a chunk of your company and all of this money back plus interest as an investor, you know, we're going to come in and we'll do this. And we'll also maybe sometimes like provide you access to our, our network of whatever the fucks to help you grow your business. This shit never fucking works for basically anybody. If you can choose between a bank loan and an investment, every time choose the bank loan. Every time. Because the bank loan, you can go bankrupt and still hold on to a lot of your shit. What these companies will do and what I saw happen is they basically over leverage you. And so you have way more valuation than you can deal with. Maybe, maybe you're the, you're the fucking like high level genius who can actually turn this thing around. Um, but generally what happens is they'll end up owning the name of your company, owning your company itself, maybe even owning you to a little bit of a degree. And then they'll either write off what you lost after they gave you all that money. Cause you have to, it, you just, you have to pay the VIG on the loan. So they'll eat you for what you've lost and then they'll take in, this is how they make the money back. Cause they will claim your company failing on their taxes. 
So they will just give you the same bankruptcy, basically, that you would have filed for on your own if you would have just defaulted on a normal loan from a bank, a normal business loan. They will just do the same sort of thing. They will file that on your behalf. They will forgive their own debts to themselves, write it all off, and then take all of your assets and liquidate them, sell them, including maybe even your name, if it's like some certain thing. You know, they'll sell you out auction and then they just make like whatever, like $100,000 off of nothing. This happens all the fucking time. I'm, I'm, I'm mutzing up little details, but this is just a thing that you should know. If you're a fucking right winger and you're freaked, there's a socialist. He's a socialist. I gotta watch out. He's freaking you out. He's going to scare you. You should pay attention to this too. Cause they'll fuck you with this. All right. They'll get you too. You're like me. All right. You, if you're listening to this podcast right now, you're not a fucking multimillionaire more than likely. They will get you with this too. Uh, be aware. Not necessarily Steven Crowder, but other people that joined the fucking right wingers. Well, what we are is we're a bunch of right wingers. We work together. Uh, you're going to be part of the family now. All we're going to need you to do is sign off about 50% of your YouTube income. What we're going to do is pay you a salary. You're going to work for us now. And then all of a sudden, like, you're like, wait, what the fuck? I've got to, like, uh, now this is a job job, but I'm also making less money. And, like, what am I getting out of this again? Like, well, you get a health insurance. <laughs> Buy your own fucking health insurance. Um, they will fuck you up. Watch out. That's a standard swindle. I don't know how I got off on this. I think I just want to actually talk about economics and accounting and like money stuff. Cause like I'm a small business owner. Hello. <laughs> and so like, I have to know like actual stuff about it. Like I have to have, I have to have a deeper understanding of these factors. Cause it's not just like, Oh, I, I just feel really strongly about like the revolution or I'm just really butthurt about my taxes. Like, dude, I got to fucking, I got to make sure I don't get in trouble with the government. Like I've paid fines because I futzed my taxes a little bit and I'm like, God damn it. They're like, Hey, sorry, bud. Yeah. You missed the filing date. That's going to be $200, but don't worry. You don't own any extra, extra penalties like $200, $200. But I paid it. Um, but if you were a multimillionaire watching this, have you bought, have you thought about investing in the West side Tyler YouTube channel? Yeah. There is no being one of the good ones under capitalism. It's just, there, there's nothing. There is nothing, you know. No one's trying to help each other. Funny thing, I'm in the process of exposing a YouTuber's, hey, it's members go up. What's up, man? 501C3, Never Stop by Jake Doolittle. He self-admittedly keeps 90% of the charity's merch profit for himself. <laughs> it's so wild. The way that people, I know this is still like, uh, I'll just talk to you guys like straightforward for a second. Uh, and then I'll finish this video. Fuck, what, what, is the, what else was I supposed to talk about tonight? Oh, we're, we're going to do some fucking uh, meme review later. But like, I just want to talk about, like, because this shit's more important than some fucking dipshit jerking himself off about, like, poll memes. I, I just, I can't take, Mentis, if you're still here, congratulate, you're actually learning shit now. Um, the amount of people that get busted for, like, chair, like, all you have, just look up the rules for the charity and you can keep the money a lot of the times. Cause like real charities do it. That's why I don't give to charities. I, I just never, I will never raise money for a charity ever more than likely on this stream, except well, with the notable exception of like the pip squeakery, which I know about personally, you know, like it's a, it's a local thing. It's they, they help small animals and stuff. I would raise money for them, but like major charities, I, I, I can't do it. I don't care to do it. I don't care to involve myself with all due respect to the people. Cause I just don't, if I can't research, and have time to just literally pull apart your entire 501c3 uh, and your your last 10 years of accounting and, and relate that to the LLCs and personal fucking businesses that you more than likely have operating as a part of it. If I can't do all of that, I'm not going to invest myself. And there's no one's going to ever be able to guilt me into doing it because I'm too, I'm built, I'm built different. I just, I'll just tell you, I don't care. And then I'll come and make fun of you for trying to even have the balls to guilt me into something. I'll, I'll destroy your charity, even if it's for a good reason. Even if it's for a good cause and you're above board, if you ever try to guilt me, I will fucking annihilate the cause that you love. I will, I will come after you fucking like fire blazing across the surface of the earth and I will destroy what you love. Don't ever fucking try that with me. Um, Sorry. But yeah, like a lot of the times these guys just fuck up because it's like, just read the rules. Like the red, they, they all embezzle shit. Just do it the way that they legally wrote into the system to embezzle. Just give yourself a bigger salary. You know what I mean? <laughs> like these dipshits will just take the money and put it in their personal account and spend it. Like what? Are you fucking stupid? 
<laughs> Why did you do it that way? Like, be a real criminal, okay? Like, f are you fucking serious? It's so embarrassing for them. And I'm, it's more embarrassing for the people that donate to them, too. I'm sorry if you ever got fucking scammed by YouTuber. I've said this before. With all due respect, you, why were you giving money to a YouTuber? Don't do it. Like, you can give me money to me, all right? But I'm telling you, like, I'm straightforward with everything. I, I'm not, none of that shit. You got to fucking look into your charities before you give them money. But the vast majority of charities... You, it's that negative accounting thing, right? You have to have your accounting get done, but you can pay yourself obscenely large amounts of money. Like you can pay yourself what you think you're worth. So many of these fucking charities do. Like you have to spend a little bit of, a little bit, a little bit of the money on the actual thing. Just spend the smallest amount, you fucking morons. You know what I mean? And then like, just keep, but like these fucking idiots will just be like, all right, thanks everybody for donating $150,000 to me. And then they just show up the next day in a fucking mink stolen a Ferrari. Like, why are you, how the fuck are you this stupid? You can get away with it. The reason I'm not telling people to try to get away with it either. I'm, I'm saying this to you guys so that you understand how fucking dangerous it is to put your faith in any entity. Charities are still... 501c3 nonprofit corporations. They are corporate entities a lot of the times. So many, so much of the time, the charity that you're looking at will also just simply be an aspect of a for profit company that uses the charity to do all sorts of shit. Launder money, <laughs> just launder money, literally just laundering money, raw ass tax evasion. Just raw dogging tax evasion in the, the tens of millions of dollars, you know. Uh, like, you could just start a super PAC and embezzle everything. Just start a fucking super PAC and just, just drink fucking money up. You know what I mean? People just give, like, $29 to Act Blue. Like, all right, there it goes. <laughs> the best part is fucking Donald Trump uh, when he was still take a donations like a year ago. I mean, he probably is. Uh, it's the like vote red, the other, the, the red version of it. And they were just like $10 of every donation goes to the candidate of your choice. But this also includes a small one-time donation of a thousand dollars to Donald Trump for president. <laughs> <laughs> we at the Donald Trump corporation swear that at least 1% of this will go to another candidate of our choosing. That it is also Donald John Trump. <laughs> he fucking just greased him. I still don't know what the fuck is going on in that dude's video, by the way. What's the relation between hamsters, Asmongold, and the fucking economy? It's next to nothing. He, he and other people on the internet have invented this idea that they created, they, that they just have redefined circular logic. Uh, they call it hamster wheeling or something like that. Which is, I looked it up, it's just a sexist version of circular logic that's like women are on a hamster wheel trying to explain, the, trying to explain themselves away, the crazy cats. Okay, there's two X chromosomes, Who's no, who knows what's going on? Um, that, that's the whole point of it. He, his, his, his fucking like video is so full of errors and it's so stupid. And pre he describes circular logic is when something is the way it is because it's the way it is basically back and forth. All right. Although it doesn't actually, it, it's a deeper aspect of the Greek concept of classical logic and syllogisms and stuff. Um, I'm not going to get hyper into it. We could have an entire stream where I tank my channel explaining in detail how to do syllogisms, or you could just go and take a basic logic course at your local college. If you like, it's the fundamental, uh, building blocks of how computer programming work, by the way, it's the same law. It's the same logic. It's a series of if then statements, algorithms, premises, you have one statement. So it'll be like, um, it, it the things that follow, right? Um, the class, what's the classic? All Greeks are human are all Greeks. Yeah. We'll just say, all Greeks are human. All humans have hair. Or no, fuck. What it, no no. That that's the air one. Oh yeah, it's 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 incorrect because it's part of the, the Greek mistranslation, so it sounds weird. All Greek are men. All men are beings, right? So all Greeks are beings. It's, it kind of goes like that. So what's a better one? 
<laughs> it's hard to just come up with a good syllogism because they're so fucking boring. <laughs> it's it's it, it it's tremendous. Um, all mammals have hair. All humans are mammals, therefore all humans have hair. Even if you have like alopecia or something, it, it still technically counts because you have like the 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 build up for it kind of deal. But that's that's what a syllogism is. It has to have those three parts. The way that the first part and the second part have to connect is via the middle part, and the middle part has to interact with the top and the bottom in a certain way. They also have to be inversely true. So if you say something and it goes in the other direction, then it's like, um, so if you say A, uh, just do it with the letters, Tyler. If A is B and B is C, then A is C, right? If A is not B and B is not C, or if A is B and B is not C, then A is not C. Like the that's how these things start fucking linking up. Uh, I, I'm I'm hopscotching to try to make sure I explain this correctly. Just look up syllogisms. Circular logic is cutting out the central part. So it's just saying if A is C, then C is A. If A is C, then C is A. Because when you cut out the middle part, the qualifier basically that actually defines the relationship between the two, then you create a tautological loop, a logical loop. And so it, it, it creates um, a circular self-justifying circle. Coconuts have hair and produce milk. Therefore, coconuts are mammals. That is circular logic. Thank you. Guys on his server. And one of the arguments I saw in favor of the labor theory of value was this amazing little gem that the labor theory of value is true because the difference between the value of the goods produced by the labor and what they get. Oh, I've got to read. Your fallacy is begging the question. So we're back to circular logic. A circular argument in which the conclusion is included in the premise, which he's been doing this entire time. The word of Zorbo the Great is flawless and perfect. We know this because it says so in the great. Oh, it can be empirically that. measured. Wow, amazing. I totally didn't know that. Therefore, the theory is correct. It doesn't matter that the business owner is the one taking on the risk of the fact that the value of said goods can change at any time because it's subjective, and thus the profits are actually being generated by producing goods that people are willing to pay for at a cost that is higher than it takes to produce them. It doesn't matter that the laborer itself is also subject to the same supply and demand curve. They can empirically measure that difference. Therefore, must surplus labor value is true. You know, kind of like how the moon is in fact a divine being. Yes, really, the moon is god none of this none of this this is it's still just circular logic <laughs> i fucking love a suit like if you don't understand what's going on here if you don't understand what's going on here he's saying that they're wrong because they're naturally just assuming that they're right he then just goes on to say that he's right and provide no actual proof that he's right he's just stating premises that he's assuming are true <laughs> that's just he's just assuming he's true therefore he's right and he's right because what he's saying is true and what he's saying is true because he's right you gotta get better at sophistry, man. How do I know that the moon is a How do I know that it's God? Well, it's simple, really. Because you can empirically measure the radius of the moon. And because that can be empirically measured, it must be divine. Brilliant. I can empirically measure something. Therefore, my assumptions about what that measurement means. Also, like, obviously, these fallacies. This is a straw man fallacy. No one, no one made this argument. No one ever would. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. At a certain point, it's just like acoustic jibber jabber. Are correct. And I know this because I can empirically measure it. Therefore, my assumptions about what that measurement means are correct. And how do I know this? Well, because I can empirically measure it. Therefore, my assumptions about what the measurement means are correct. And how do I know that? Well, of course, because I can empirically measure it. And therefore, my assumptions about what that measurement means are correct. And round and round that hamster wheel goes. Where does it stop? Nobody. It, is it not wild? Like, can, am, I, am I fucking. He's just doing the thing that he's saying he's doing it's fucking cool as shit uh, it's like a hamster that's on a wheel watching another hamster that's on a wheel run as fast as he can and going that dipshit's not going anywhere <laughs> it's like a far side cartoon as a whole video 
It's wild. I'm yeah. going to make fun of this yeah. guy yeah. more. Yeah. Mentis, it's, it's you're one of my new pets. Argument. And that's how the rationalization hamster works. The logic of their argument becomes obviously insane when compared to something like claiming the moon is magic because we can then see it. Therefore, magic exists because we can see the moon round and round, et cetera, et cetera. But the hamster... no, no, none of that. None of that follows. This is gibberish. Gibberish. Care. The hamster has one goal, and that is to come up with arguments that don't immediately sound wrong, at least to the mind from which the hamster came from. So long as you don't think about it too hard, the claim that the labor theory of value is correct because you can empirically measure the difference between what a laborer earns and the value of the goods they produce, that just might sound like a good argument. It's of course not, let me just explain why it's not, but to the hamster hijacked mind. You're the hamster hijacked mind, this is cool. This is cool. Hey Ma, it's a schizo post. <laughs> Hey Ma! Get a he skits so this on post. How value works is not really a genuine disagreement, and the concept of the subjective theory of value is really easy for people to grasp. And as for that disagreement, well, it's more or less just a battle of wit between those of us who have acknowledged the reality that yes, equality is not a real thing all the time, and those who allow the hamster to run the show. And you can really see this if you go back in time and watch videos like the one from the Gravel Institute. Oh shit! I'm not. I don't have it on the screen. I'm sorry, you guys. The idea you... that profit is theft. You weren't missing anything. I'm sorry. If you were worried that the video wasn't playing, um, all he was doing was putting up the same hamster thing again and still apparently being bad at Guild Wars. <laughs> That's designed to elicit your emotions. Oh no, you've been stolen from. It's very blatantly designed to appeal to the audience's emotions. Oh no, the business owner usually makes money off his investment, which means the labor isn't getting the full value of what people he are is annoying the thing goods he produces. Never mind the fact that this completely ignores all the other thousands of factors and overhead costs. The owner is making more money than the little guy, and that's not fair. That's not equality. That hurts my feelings. Three, two, one. You're being emotional. You're the emotional one. People You're the baby. The most you amazing, baby. Most relaxing sleep you ever had. Let all your troubles and fears melt away in the relaxation. No need to worry anymore because your rationalization. Oh, here we go. Finally, shown thank God. Thank God. We finally got. I, I told you guys. I told you. I fucking told you it was going to be him saying a bunch of bullshit so he could blue ball a slur. There we go. We got to it. We got to it. We find, what the fuck is the I'm with her on here, bro? It's 2024. Your hair's never coming back, all right? Shout out to this dude for getting out of the fucking, uh, getting out of the freezer section at the Walmart. Now, and it's time for your brain to generate another 10,000 mental gymnastics in order to justify the feel-goodism belief that equality feels nice, therefore equality real. Yeah. And that's the sad truth about Four the times? debate between the labor theory of value and the subjective value. It's really not a serious thing. It's just that because it's tied to my equality and my fairness, it automatically becomes a touchy subject. Hurt feelings, almonds activated, hamster wheel online. And here's the thing a lot of people might not realize. Intellectual honesty isn't always tied to true intellectual ability. There is some correlation there on the G-factor, but it's not always the case. There are plenty of well-educated people on the triple-digit side of the G-factor who are unfortunately under- The fuck is the G-factor? Is that when you make videos online instead of getting laid? <laughs> the G-factor. Mind you, this is a video where the guy earlier said, from my studies into hypnosis. Total hamster control. And that's why this is such an important topic. It seems like a silly topic, but the reality is it's very Bro, easy if you want the fucking smoke, Mentis, I want your, I want to fucking, really stupid things I want it of the so reason, which is I want to fuck you up like you wouldn't This is what I meant in that I want to bully you, bro. Fabian Liberty, which not everybody may have noticed. That's the subjective theory of value is somewhat of a litmus test. It's to see if a person's able to accept an unwanted truth or if there's just a pseudo-intellectual who So long as one puts f reels over feels, even a child can grasp STOV. Thus, STOV is somewhat of a litmus test to see if a person is able to accept unwanted truths or if they are a pseudo intellectual who does hamsterizations for what they wish to be true. You fucking subhuman dog person. <laughs> you animal. You put circular logic in the tweet! <laughs> So long as someone um, expresses the ability to understand feels over reels, then they can show that they understand feels over reels. Because they show that they've understood feels over reels, they understand feels over reels. <laughs> what in the fuck? Shout out Fabian Literary or Liberty. Seriously, Esmond Gold understands economics better than half my econ professors. Someone get this guy a copy of A Theory of Socialism and Capitalism. Motherfucker can't... Esmond Gold can't fucking read. 
finding out that Asmongold is illiterate all along would be the the, the least, the most no one shocked Pikachu face revelation of all time. Who hamsterizes for what they want to be true? Does He's G filled. Is the G factor the Gooner factor? Process? Well, interesting enough, where it comes to having to understand Gooner factor, Gooner factor, dude. Gooner He's got a Gooner factor of a thousand. Because again, a lot of these economic concepts don't act. <laughs> I can't, I can't stop making fun of this snip shit. Okay. This is a Kojima, a Hideo Kojima game. Helicopters landing on a ship and a guy jumps out. Like little invisibility cloak disappears. He's smoking a cigarette. Tell me about what's going on in here. You need to be careful, Snake. There's a guy in the, there's a guy downstairs that you can't be messing apart He's, he's part of the social libertarian squad. Social libertarian. I've never heard of that. Just understand fact that he's got a G factor. That's a gooner factor of a thousand. He can read minds and sometimes control them, Snake. <sighs> How do I get past this? Snake, use your chaff grenade. <laughs> use a stun grenade and then go behind him, Snake. He won't be able to see you when you come from behind. Solid Snake. I knew you would be here, but I have a Gooner Factor of over 5,000. I know the next move you're going to make. What? How is he doing this? Wow, Snake. You plugged your controller into port 2. <laughs> He'll no longer be able to use his Gooner powers to read what you're doing. Your Gooner Factor is not going to work here. Wow, Snake, that was incredible. <laughs> my, favorite North, my favorite part was when he said it's goon in time. <laughs> I don't know how to combine the word Morbius and Gooner together, but like this guy is Gorbius. <laughs> Gorbius. It's Gorbin time. Smart in order to get them. You just have to be honest. You just have to be one of those people who knows how to keep the hamster under Do control. Do a fade in. Do a fade in right there. Probably isn't an expert in economics in any academic or credential sense. But the thing I love that the real argument is just that if you feel anything, if you have an emotional reaction to anything, you are now like unable to trust. Like it, it, it there's a there is there's a, a like a natural like if you have felt an emotion, you can now no longer actually like assess anything <laughs> Fuck it. how fucking stupid do you have to be to even say that just like there's a zero sum value between like feeling emotions and being able to think about anything like i was I, I bet this is actually real for them too because i bet this is the kind of guy him and like the kind of people that talk to him they get like angie you know like they get <clears throat> Angy, angy, that fucking like th anybody that puts this much fucking soy jack effort into shit has got to have the whole. F <clears throat> if he doesn't look like school shooters, so soy jack, I would be fucking stunned, man. He is and he just gets angry and then he can't think or he can't think. Mom, Mom I'm gonna punch the wall again. <laughs> have this dude's, have this dude's audience, Mom. If I don't get my tendies by 10 p.m., I'm punching the drywall. They do that little, you know, when you piss off somebody that's just a little too acoustic, and they do this thing. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't know if you understand this, but I've been listening to Mentis and... I am in control of my emotions, which is how I know that I'm the logical one in this situation. <laughs> Concepts. This isn't what matters most. You don't actually Tyler, can you do a Senator Armstrong voice sometimes? Are willing to pay. You just need to be honest and call it like you see it. Or in other words, you I really sure I can't do a Senator Armstrong voice because the meme lives too strong in my head. <laughs> That's a nice statement, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a source? My sources. I made it the fuck up. My source is I live in a gooner dungeon. <laughs> nice video, Senator. Why don't you go outside and touch grass? <laughs> I 
sure that you're the one at the decision-making desk, not the hamster. The hamster is a tempting little guy. The hamster will tell you what you want to hear, and he'll provide your mind reasons that sound just smart enough that you might Look at the dude, the fu the the work, the work you have to go into straw. Man, this shit's so fucking sad. I know it's like <laughs> you're really triggered. Like, dude, I'm a fucking good look. I can see myself on the camera right now. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm good, bro. All I can think of you just sitting in your fucking like trench coat or something. There's like I don't know, some really lame fucking hentai and like hentai anime, some edgy shit. You just got redo of healer English dub running beside you while you just angrily put mm, 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 trying to fucking put together this little little mean picture. I'm gonna show them on the internet. <laughs> the second I learned how to do hypnoti hypnotization, Jennifer McCauley's never gonna make fun of me again. <laughs> I have supreme control of my emotions. No one's going to rent make the hamster in my head run crazy. <laughs> not notice that they're BS Harley, if you just bro. decide to go along with it and not run a recheck. Oh. Anyways, that's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, subscribe, leave a comment, or if you really liked it, leave a tip on my ko -fi. I did get a question I saw from somebody about asking whether or not I was going to keep making more long-form, high-effort videos that aren't just game rants. The answer to that is yes, and I'm actually pushing to get one done that I've been lightly procrastinating on a little bit, but I'm going to push to get it done within the first half of February. But yeah, again, that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Fuck, bro. That's just... That's weak. <laughs> Mal. I can't believe I know I, I know we've watched that for three hours, but most of it was just me talking about other shit. Holy fuck, that's fucking funny. Oh god, not redo of healer. Another banger for the straw man folder. <laughs> you know his mom sounds just like Eric Cartman's mom. Pookums, you've been skid marking your underwear again. Are you getting too mad at people on the internet? Nah, ma'am. <laughs> He's got a hamster in his heart. There's a hamster in my heart, and it's trying to get out. I'm going to have to take a real quick break. I love you guys. What a video. Mentis, if you pop by, dude, hop in. Hop in. Show that you're not fucking bitch built, and that your dad was a man when he fucking busted one in your mom and fight me on the internet. <laughs> Come on. You're a coward. I bet your spit always tastes like fucking Code Red Mountain Dew and plaque. <laughs> I bet you still dip your tendies in honey sauce. No, nah, that's a mean thing to say. Honey sauce is all right. <laughs> Come get some. I want it. I want, to, I want to fuck you up so bad. Come and debate me. Do it. I'm not going to reach out to you. As per usual, everybody, by the way, you all know this. Don't go and talk to anybody on my behalf. It's for me only. But fuck, I want to make... I just want to... Like, I'm not going to lie. It's probably not going to be kind for you. It's going to be blood sports grade shit. You probably don't have that in you, but I'm here. I'm here for it. I fucking... I want to... I want to fuck with you so bad. Be my first. I need to build up my amateur record before I start fighting with real people. All right? We're going to do internet debates, and then before I turn, like, 40, hopefully, into some of that influencer box. I'm going to teach myself how to box. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to go after him. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, I'm going to take a break real quick. Uh, and then we're going to do some memes. We're going to be talking about... Uh, Sovereign citizens and shit. It's a libertarian night on West Side Tyler Live. I hope you guys are having a good time. I hope you have a fun time. Oh, did, wait, did somebody... I'm sorry. I have to double check this real quick. Okay. All right, cool, cool. Sid Crow, by the way, welcome to Goof. I don't think I said hi. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, we got gifted subs last night, by the way. Uh, if you guys want to tell me, I don't know if, there, if I have to do anything to like... Do you guys get them? Is it just I get money? I have no idea how that works. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not good at grifting yet. I guess. 
Tell people to like the stream before leaving. Oh, 100%. Please, before you go, before I go, please, 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 please take a second to like the stream. We only have 64 likes and 146 concurrent viewers. Please get in there. Hit that, smash that like button. Also, shout out for shout out to Mentis for Asmund Gold name and, and headline because it didn't fucking address him at all. He spent less time on the Asmund Gold video than I did, which is impressive considering it was a glaze attempt. Either way, <laughs> I'm gonna be back in a second. Like the stream everybody and if you are new here popping through for the first time please take a second to subscribe when we get back here it's sovereign citizen time sovereign citizen meme review shout out everybody on the discord if you're on the discord right now this is your last chance to get some sovereign citizen memes in they're pretty funny and i just want to look up some of the stuff so check it out boom
love you win day. How you guys doing? Welcome back. Boy, that's a that's the biggest fall off. Holy shit, man. <laughs> I love it when like 10% of you guys just leave it break. It's <laughs> it's hilarious. I think actually what the case is, because I have like 691 views, I think people are just constantly coming in and leaving, except for like my core people, which are, there's usually like 70 to 80 of you. And this, the second that I'm gone, I just stop refreshing the audience. Like people don't actually leave. They do. It's just that people don't show back up. By the way, where did the bunny cam go? Oh, it doesn't exist in the uh, interim. The, the bunny cam disappears when I turn on this screen. Intentionally, because I have to walk past it, and I, I, I don't want people taking screenshots of my feet. It's just too weird. <laughs> I wouldn't be offended. It would just be gross. By the way, tonight's stream is sponsored by Pineapple Jaritos. Es bueno son. Oh, man, that's good. Dude, I'm actually really liking the pineapple. Like, I wasn't used to it because I've been drinking so much Mandarin, but now I'm like... Mm. I want the guava one. I want the guava one real bad. I want free and fair elections. Congress people got a raise. Congress people got a raise an average of $12 million this cycle just to compete. That's us being priced out of politics. Agreed. Yeah, there should be massive caps on um, donations, if not just an elimination of political donations at all. I know that people are like, it's freedom of speech, but like, is it really free? Because imagine if you could only talk if you had a megaphone on, and the megaphone costs $10 million. <laughs> Doesn't really work. I think eliminating, um, eliminating campaign contributions overall and permitting people to basically like, you can run based on your own reputation, and then there is just the governmental people's system of, like, candidate, you know, um, candidate, like, I'm here I am, I'm this guy, and then just let people go based on their personality, I think it would be way better. I think you would get just such a much better mix of candidates. You would get so many more, like, not like Donald Trump, Trump's, but, like, you would get so many more of just fucking characters running for Congress that you probably want to be fucking elected and shit. And Tyler trying to command the economy of his foot photos. It's literally, it's literally forced scarcity. Drinking a lime jaritos now? No. Piña, por favor. Axe Sand. What did Axe Sand say? Ao, let's go. Was that? <laughs> if home, if homosexuality isn't sinful, why am I straight? I don't know. That that doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> Oh, because you're a sinner. Okay, I, I get it. No, it's not an offensive thing. It's just confusing. It, it, it has the offensive vibe to it, but he wasn't being offensive. Maybe make laws that news organizations have to interview them. I'm sorry to say, but those already exist to a degree. Um, announcing your candidacy in the, the paper of record is like a notable thing. Um, you can't force people necessarily to like, but you should be able to force them to air everybody that hits a reasonable threshold of entry and stuff. But like, yeah, that, that could work. But a lot of candidates, and I'm speaking from my time in newspapers and even like my friends that are still in it, a lot of candidates will just refuse to be interviewed because it's not worth it for them to have the truth found out about them. <laughs> you would have to have it be two ways. You would have to say that the candidates also have to appear for interviews with every single, um, organization of record which you could do you know if you have three major newspapers per state or three major news outlets a paper a radio and a, a broadcasting agency that can like you know if you just have all of the firms work together for as as an as a knowledge like you know like hey for time reasons you know um i think that would actually work infinitely better so just like you have to do a radio interview uh 
a written interview and a broadcast interview and you can mix internet in with like probably print would be a good mix for that. Then you have journalists from all those organizations who are part of their, their relative news organizations drum up questions that are relative regional region relevant. I'm talking for, you know, a national politician, like basically just the president uh, state levels just do the same thing, but like by County and stuff. I think that would actually be a really good idea, but you have to, if you're going to be on the ballot and you get to be in the papers, you have to agree to a uh, interview at every paper, no matter if they're good or like they're, they're for or against you. You just have to agree to an interview. No can statements. You have to sit down and answer their questions. That would be such a violation, quote unquote, of people's freedom of they, they'd be absolutely ass blasted. But the violation would just basically put politicians in a position where they have to answer uncomfortable questions about themselves, which I think would be fine. I think that the amount of power that you get as a politician offsets your rights to privacy and free speech a considerable bit. Because, yeah, you you have like the right to free speech as a person, but you shouldn't have the right to free speech as the president of the America, uh, uh, as the president of the United States of America, that like a single person has, because that right is conferred onto the individual non-empowered citizen as a way to equivocate their existence in a way towards yours, you know, to provide political equity. If you can control nuclear weapons and also like order, put gag orders on people and when you talk automatically, everybody's already listening. I don't think that you have the same, should even be permitted to have the same rights as a, as a private individual citizen anymore. Because you're not a private citizen. You're the fucking president of the United States of America. Politicians need to be bullied into compassion and decency. Yeah, 100%. I don't even need to hear anything more. I don't care which politician is, right or left. I don't give a fuck. Politicians should be terrified of the people that they serve. If they're not, they should either be, if they are a liar, terrified, and if they are a truth sayer, uh, wonderfully empowered. You know what I mean? The right to free tweets. Much like how the president's account isn't allowed to block people on Twitter, they shall not block newspaper interviews. 100%. There needs to be... Talk about all these stupid... They, we fight for the stupidest fucking rights in the Constitution. Like, I respect, literally... It, this is not a thing that most of my fucking like, lefty friends agree with uh, in my personal life, but I, I'm pretty staunchly a supporter of the Second Amendment with... It, not the way that fucking righties want it. I, I don't think that slovenly... Uh, Greece people should be able to fucking um, get over their small cock sizes by fucking live carrying uh, condition one pistols in a fucking Chipotle. Like, I don't like that at all. I, I it's, it's, it's hard for me. And sometimes in po I make faces at people that have guns on their hips that aren't cops. I'm like, like, are you fucking serious? Like, I'm not impressed. What are you gonna do? Shoot me. I don't give a fuck. Grow the fucking balls that you didn't have when you fucking bought that thing and walking around. Dude, everyone knows that you're 5'3". Like, it's okay. Just fucking get a tall hat while you fucking walk around with a gun. But, like, instead of fucking fighting for way cooler rights, like, the right to response from government officials, which should be a thing. Like, if you ask a government official a question within, like, a level of reason, you know, because, like, obviously there you could overload a system in like whatever you know you would run out of literally all of the time on earth but if you ask as a taxpayer any question of the american government there should be a requirement that it's answered within a day a day i don't give a fuck a day if it's difficult then pr then create a database that allows me to bypass asking you the questions that just tells me everything i want to know how about that find me the good argument against it any question. You can still have secrets. You can have top secret things. You can just literally say that's top secret classified for X reason for different things, right? But like everything else that's not those highly specific compartmentalized that I should know immediately. I should be able to know where every fucking cop in my city makes. I don't give a fuck. It's their private. They don't have fucking privacy. I pay them. I want to know what every, every teacher, there you go. Righties, bully the teachers. That's what you wanted to hear. I should know what every fucking civic servant makes. 
Every civil servant, I should know what they make. And and, and not just for my uh, benefit, for their benefit as well. Because why the, why the fuck would I not? Like, why the fuck would I not? Why would I not know? Why would they be permitted to keep that information from me? I want to know every single cop that's on the force. I want to know their names and I want to know what their faces are. Hey, what about their safety? Fuck their safety. I don't give a fuck. I'm not having secret police. Fuck their safety. Quit. It, wh what's going to happen? Stop making people want to fucking kill you. If seeing your face and knowing your name is some great threat and you work in, fu what, automotive division? You know? Like, you're a, fu you're a fucking file hog that carries a gun and fills out requisition forms. I should know what the fuck you look like and how much you make. I want to know. I want to know if you're fucking overweight. I don't think there should be fat cops. How about that one? You're being fat phobic. Yes. And that can don't tell me how much you do for us. Oh, he's a hero. No, your dad is fucking 210 pounds overweight and can barely get out of his cruiser. He's not a hero to anyone. He's going to fucking go down in the line of duty because he had too much fucking Frisch's big boy. Fucking heart's going to pop out through his goddamn bulletproof vest. I don't want that shit. Get healthy. If you can't climb over a wall, you can't be a cop. How about that one? Whoa, well, uh, 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 hold on. You're being mean to the boys in blue. How the fuck is that mean? <laughs> what the fuck good are you? It's just like you get a badge. You're like, oh, dude, just anything I do, fucking, I just shit gold now. Yeah, before this, I was like a, a basically like a mentally damaged sociopath that could barely pass fucking remedial math. But now that I have a badge, I'm a hero. <laughs> have you done anything heroic yet? No, no, no. But you got to pay me ahead of time. And then when it happens, maybe I'll do it. <laughs> Motherfucker. It's like, bro, your fucking badge is stuck between your titty and your belly. Like, I didn't even know you were a cop. What the fuck? How do they have extra uniforms that are that stretchy? If you want to be fat, just go do any other job that doesn't require you to literally chase the bad guys. That's what you guys, you're going to chase the bad guy. Who are you chasing? Is the fucking Michelin man out here with a popped tire foot? No, he's not. If you want to be fat, be a private citizen. You can't be on my dollar getting, having blood pressure that high. I just won't permit it. I don't want it to exist. You can't do, you can't do a push-up. You're a cop. You can't do a fucking push-up. You should be shamed. That's what I want to see. Remember when they used to be, do, be cruel to just average private citizens by taking videos of them from the neck down? Be like, oh, look at this guy. I don't mind if you're overweight, all right? As a, as a private citizen, that's your right, okay? It's not a lifestyle that I would engage in myself, but that's your right, okay? I'm not going to try to fucking juice you up and be like, you're beautiful as hell. I wish I, I wish I looked just like you. It's your thing. Just be yourself. That's fine. But if you're going to fucking make money off of my tax dollars, you better be able to fucking jump through the literal hoops of being a fucking cop. Like, I don't give a fuck. And they should be taking video. Like, what is this one? Well, look at this guy. He can't draw his gun because his fucking flap is over the top of it. He's got to lean on a post so he can fucking draw his sidearm. What the fuck? He's part of the SWAT team. What in the What's he swatting? The flies that are trying to eat his hot dog? The fuck? Here in Seattle, we have some of the highest paid cops in the country, and they're 100% useless. Yeah, dude, we have fucking... We have way overpaid cops. They can... They literally just cannot stop sexually assaulting women in the, in the community. <laughs> can you guys stop hitting people with... With drink cups... And sexually assaulting women. Could you stop it for a second? Oh, hold on now. We're heroes. What the? If we left, it would be riots in the street tomorrow. Like, at a certain point, I'm for the riots. <laughs> you know? If the riots are here, you're not even going to be in my fucking neighborhood. You're going to the rich people's neighborhood. Somebody was saying that in my neighborhood group, like, a couple weeks ago. They were like, you know, we, we can't, like, it, like there's, like, break-ins that are happening in a certain area because this one guy just keeps breaking in. They're like, what if we kind of, like, raised money together for, like, a common security guard that would actually, like, protect the property around here? And everyone's just like, that's a cop. Our cops just don't ever do cop shit. Well, I'm not appreciated enough. No one came out and threw me a parade today. Ah, you know what it's like for people to tell you you're a cunt? Every song I've heard since I was three years old and then I took this job at 18 because nowhere else would take me. Because I got, 
I got the stupids real bad. But then they're mean to me. <laughs> they're mean to me, Andy. <laughs> Training day two, gaining day based. <laughs> Someone that can't run two blocks is going to shoot people running away. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, I used to like Joe Rogan just a little bit when he was like, every cop should know how to do something like a little bit of jujitsu and shit or like box. Yeah. Every cop that can't win a fist fight is going to fucking shoot somebody. They're bitch made. They're fucking scared. Everybody, they'll be in a neighborhood. No one else is wearing a fucking flak jacket. They got a flak jacket, a radio that can call like 15 other heavily armed dudes in a gun and still be like, I don't know if I want to walk around in that neighborhood. <laughs> what the fuck good are you people? I swear to God. So overvalued. Do we need police? Yes. But Fuck. Like, police reform is so overdue that it, like, looped around to new versions of overdue police reform. <laughs> like, like we were supposed to reform certain actions, and then that just, like, didn't happen enough, so those are just the part of the way things work now. <laughs> and, uh, and we're like, well, we're okay with that. We just need them to stop, like, literally just sexually assaulting the people that are in the backs of their cruisers, like, all the time. Like, every department in America, like, two or three times a year. It was stunning regularity. Other countries are like, we are just worried that they're not getting enough remedial training. They only have this four-year program and then remedial training twice a year in for the months of October and the months of February. <laughs> what do you mean remedial training? This is so that they can keep up with current trends in crime and uh, personal interaction they don't do this in your country uh they go to the shooting range real real fact one of the current one of the current uh stories in louisville right now is a cop that teaches shooting safety at the shooting range in louisville a cop shot one of his recruits in the chest at the shooting range while demonstrating gun safety, he popped the kid right in his fucking black jacket. The cop shot a recruit. <laughs> you can't. It really happened. The Courier Journal that my buddy Josh is working for is suing them because the officer tried to get all of the other recruits to be like, hey, we got to cover this up because this could affect all of us equally. And the department won't release whether or not that guy is still teaching firearms training. They're like, well, we can't really say. What? 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 Uh, what? Historic has a historic def deficiency in cop numbers since we got statehood. A large number of MPLS cops are the dumbest people from California to transfer them. They live 50 miles outside the city. Yeah. <sighs> the two biggest things that go against cop, like, recruitment, and it's just universal because they, like, do... <laughs> they do, like, studies and shit on this and, like, get people to, like, you know, they pull people. And the two biggest issues are, A, that everybody fucking hates cops, and no one except for the fucking weirdest people want to be a cop, like, because it's just a... Because you have to be a cop. Not because it's, like, a hard job or dangerous. It's because you have to be a fucking cop. And cops suck, specifically. Like, they're just dis dislikable people. They're dog shit. And then the other one is, no one wants to... Very few people want to, like... act in support of laws that they don't agree with. You know what I mean? Because, like, our laws, shit that's illegal in America is dumb as fuck. Like, the vast majority of people in America, stunningly high majority of people in America, don't agree with any Republican law prescriptions at all once they actually see them. They'll be like, I am afraid of being robbed. I will vote for a law and order candidate. And then, like, they get elected, and like, what do you mean? But sex is illegal. They took down my favorite porno store. This isn't freedom. Fucking dumb as shit. And then, like, you know, so you get like a bunch of extra money for cops, 
and then you can't find any cops to hire anyway because nobody wants to fucking work for the goddamn Republicans. And then like the crime that you could be knocking down, actual just legitimate like private personal property crime. You know, like uh, f- patrolling literal neighborhoods that you uh, people actually live in and require the cops to be there to like make the neighborhood safe. Never that fuck off. Oh, that's never happened. And when's the last time you saw a cop walking? I haven't seen a cop walking in Louisville the entire time I've lived here, except for in and out of the fucking precinct building or in and out and around their car on the highway in my neighborhood. I don't know who the fucking cop that fucking patrols Germantown Louisville is. Who, who is there multiple of them? I see their cars parked around here. Cause some of them fucking live in the neighborhood. I get around. I fucking ride my bike places. I walk. You know, I look out my window. I see my neighbors all the time. Like, I'm like, I know that guy. That's the guy with the brown dog. That's the guy with the small dog. That's that lady. That's that dude. That's that kid. I know these people, even if I don't know them personally. Cop, who the fuck? I haven't seen them. Every once in a while, a cruiser will stop on my street because they got to fuck up some fucking crackhead that lives in the apartments down from where I live. Because that shit just happens. It's the dog shit apartment. That's, what ha- that's the kind of people that live there. I don't like the use of that word. Fucking live with them then, stupid motherfucker. Shut up. But, like, walking around, talk to the guy? No. <laughs> Fuck no. It's scared. Shook. Scared to death. Scared to look. Now I'm talking shit. Obviously, there are good dudes behind some badges. There are some, but it's like... Bro, why do I have to focus on that? It's like saying, like, you know, there's some good dudes that are fucking, like, running street corners. Like, obviously, every drug dealer is not, like, the worst human being that's ever existed. But, like... <laughs> Can I not, why do I, why do I have to like, why do I have to focus on the good (laughs) in the potential of like all of the fucking horrible conduct that they're getting up to? I was going to go in for security forces in the air force, but they were manned at the time. Now I work with air crew. Kind of like it turned out like that. Dude, never go fucking provost marshal. PMO, them ROTC kids got to grow up into something eventually and it's usually cops. (sighs) Fucking ain't that the truth. I was going to be a cop, but my parents were like, cops are corrupt, and my dad was a New Jersey cop. <laughs> He's like, Bro, I can't let you be used against me. Your dad's got like six swindles on the side. He's like, if I have my kid on the forest, bro, he's going to end up with a fucking blindfold and a gun on the back of his head on a pier, and I'm going to have to come and bring somebody $80,000. Big win for my town, though. The police here, station here closed like seven years ago or whatever. And unless they're here in numbers to do something, there's only other, like one or two cops here at the time. Yeah. And of course, it's it's everybody's fault but the fucking cops. They, they, they did everything right. They did everything right. But it was, people are just complaining. I don't know. We did everything right. Everything in our power. We did it. Sorry, if you were just not exceptionally liberal in 1982, then you guys would have so many more cops. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm supposed to do fucking, uh, oh my God, I'm supposed to do memes. Let's, let's, let's hop into the memes real quick before I end the night. I told everybody to get your shit. This is your last chance to get your fucking, um, your sovereign citizen memes in. Because I just want to learn about them a little bit, honestly. How does my, what is the layout? Me. I'm. Yeah. Oh my God. What is this? Actually, you're forgetting about the balls. Come on. (laughs) Bro, you guys remember when little Joe, Joel was like more listenable? Or big Joel? I don't, I don't like dislike Big Joel, but so like, I don't know how he even fell off because I never felt like he was a hundred percent on. Shout out, useful pig. But th- that was just, that's just a fucking funny clip. Oh come on, don't fuck with me like that. Meme review. I think it's just supposed to be here like this. But why? No, 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 no. We don't do that. Actually, you're forgetting about the balls. Come on, guys. Did you really forget about the balls? Men have balls? Big pendulous dangling ones too. Do you honestly not know what fucking testicles are? A man- Yo! 
Yo. Yo. First off, shout out everybody left us leftist auto audio quality because this is from like 2014. But f- do you guys remember some black guy? That's what this dude's name is. Right after TJ. Ones too. Do you want- some black guy. This dude had a moment. I can't remember exactly what it was, but he had a moment on screen. And I remember seeing it in one of his videos before he vanished, where he was just like very clearly went, I just did a grift. Like it was like, you could see it in his eyes. Like I just did a fucking grift and it broke him and he stopped. And now he does like death metal covers. (laughs) Honestly, not know what fucking testicles are. A man cannot afford some black guys in a content death spiral. I mean, it, it started a long time ago. I just, I fucking like, I forget that he existed sometimes. Like, he had some okay takes, and then I think like the the money people that fucking Chris Raygun thing, like they got to look like, fucking pre cucked Hunter Avalon. Little did he know someday, his his wife would run off with him, rough run off on him with a porn star the same year that his new girlfriend got shot in an altercation in West Virginia. What a life this young man was destined to live at the filming of this fucking video. Jesus Christ. Wash his own genitals. Guys have balls and dicks. These guys Lost the time. met a man before. Do they even know that men have dicks and balls? Are you fucking kidding me? That's why they sit so with their legs wide apart, because they... Do they even know? Actually, you're forgetting about. <laughs> I don't know who shared that, but the, what? A, or I do know. Useful. I don't know why useful pig shared that. That's just from the memes thing. But that's tremendous, dude. The, can we just bring the memes page up? I got streamer mode enabled. Boink. Streamer mode. Ignore the other ones that I'm a part of. I don't have anything weird on my Discord, right? Right, 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 yeah. Hey, man. Hey. Where you hit? Down the bar in the middle. Uh, can I catch a ride? Yeah, I'll put it back. All I right. got my pet Gips in the front right here. <laughs> man, I don't know. Nah, they ain't there nothing. They got me. They look kind of dangerous. Nah, they nice. Oh, all right, I'm going to try. Hey, just move that fishing pole out the way. <laughs> all right. Oh, man, what's this in the back seat? Bro. Oh man, they must have moved. Bro. Man, you need to you need to call you an exterminator, dude. Oh no. I ain't playing get rid of my pants. Uh I'ma walk, bro. I'ma walk. You go ahead. Bro, I could never. The fucking wasps stinging and slapping against the fucking camera is terrifying. Streaming mode just means it won't give you notifications. Oh, fuck. I need to keep that on. Why nature's liquid Adderall is taking over the internet? (laughs) Bro, if you have a bottle with a fucking bored ape on it and you drink anything from it, you deserve every effect that gets Horrible. I wonder how much coke this guy does to do these shorts. <laughs> you very nearly got banned for having this on my server. You shouldn't have called the Zootopia rabbit sexy political. <laughs> <laughs> what a chad. God damn. These goddamn gooning furries are destroying America. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you shouldn't have called the Zootopia rabbit sexy. Dad. <laughs> oh god, I can't even I can't even do any Ben Shapiro shit. Okay, so if you guys don't know, I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll, we'll bang out these for a little bit. But I had to create a containment thread for Sovset bullshit. Uh, so sovereign citizens are the natural evolution. You guys know, like this is why this kind of fits. The natural evolution 
of the like gooner brain rot meme bullshit that we just watched where that kid just fucking like rules lawyered his way and saying, I'm sorry, but the president presence of a single rule that I cannot really, <laughs> that I've just arbitrarily decided was the most important thing ever is, uh, it, it defeats the entire concept of Marxism. Fucking wild. Wild. Doesn't even address any of the issues, but like that is the natural, this is the next natural step for those people. Um, Friends in law. <laughs> my new job that loved my work ethics and how quickly I learned it was self governing let me go because of my background. Said they have strict ATF rules to follow. Was a gun manufacturing company. I was in the office. Is there anything I can do? Lady said if any one of our guys goes out this weekend and gets into trouble, they can lose their job. Told her I didn't do nothing. I'm exercising my right of travel. <laughs> she said it doesn't matter. It's conflict with the law. <laughs> I'm reading the rules to see exactly what it says. Didn't take any taxes out of any kind. Would I be able to go collect unemployment now? I've never wanted to go apply for unemployment because that's just another trap to another contract, so I didn't want to do that. It's just the whole firearms ruling section of the ATF.com that it's not as hyper-specific rule or regulation is monstrous. It's just the whole subsection of the website is what's the relevant information. Is there any way to apply for unemployment of the corporation and stay sovereign? <laughs> Wikipedia lawyers who engage in paper terrorism, 100%. Command consult, soap sit one. <laughs> True. Oh my god. They really are the kind of they do they really do feel like there's like command consoles. It's it's crazy. I know some people are just mentally unwell, but like legitimately I have like come across these human beings in like my real life and I didn't engage with because it's like it's the same thing really as running into like one of those like crystal mommy type people or just any libertarian. Like they're confused about how the world works and they just live so deeply in their delusion. You're never gonna talk them out of it. Um, but I don't understand what some of this stuff, some of these things had laws in them. And I want to look at that because I want to see what the fuck they're even talking about. <clears throat> also, this is a good question. ATF.gov rules and regulations. F.gov slash rules and regulations slash firearms rulings. What is this section? Oh, that's amazing. It, it, it's just literally just federal. It's the definition of federal regulations is what fucked this guy up. Regulations are issued by federal agencies, boards, or commissions. They explain how the agency intends to carry out a law. <laughs> federal regulations are created through a process known as a rulemaking. By law, federal agencies such as ATF must consult the public when creating, modifying, or deleting rules in the Code of Federal Regulations. This is an annual publication that lists the official and complete text of federal agency regulations. So this is, this is awesome. Um, this is a thing that you come across a lot of times. So people uh, get really fucked up by the concept of synonyms. It actually just, if, you, if you're not a, a particularly like bright person or you're the self-deluding type, you might not understand this. Uh, but laws and rules, although they sound the same, are not necessarily the same thing. There are three branches of government, right? And they all operate under different sets of rules, initially handed out by the, down by the Constitution, but the Constitution is not the final document of law in the country. It's actually the first. Everything starts at the Constitution and then works its way down, which is why you have lower courts, because we have states' rights, we have states' courts, we have local courts, we have all sorts of rules all the way down, which is why you go up to the Supreme Court, because it's the first rules, and then they go down. People don't understand that there's a direction that these things go in, and that also new things spall off on the way down. So, for instance, Congress has the right to raise an army. Okay, then they have also the right to put rules in charge over the army. Or actually, I'll do a better one. 
the, uh, the they have the right to create and fund bureaus that carry out the executive functions, the laws that they put into place as representatives of the people. Those organizations are aspects of the executive branch of the government, which carries out the laws passed by the legislative government. We have a third branch called the judicial branch that judges whether or not those laws fit within the legal context of the established voted on laws, including the Constitution. There's a whole chunk of them up at the top. They're wizards. And uh, they just arbitrarily decide um, to fuck people over. But like generally going down the line, uh, past into federal and then into local judges, you get a little bit more, <laughs> a little more sense of scale as to what, what the people want to happen. But the executive branch can determine the ways to do its own job. <laughs> so when you have the FBI gets put in, the FBI will be handed a mandate or, or something of that line, and then it will create rules in order to do FBI shit based on the laws that are passed down. So if you have a law that says, like, hey, you are not allowed to murder somebody and then cross state lines. They, that is a law. The rules in the FBI are like, okay, so if somebody does this, it is our job to find them and put them in jail. There's also all the rules about finding them, how what we can and can't do all the rules about jail all the rules about how we interact on the ground with people all the rules about what really constitutes our impression of a murderer because we don't decide if they're a murderer we just say we really suspect they are and then once we've kind of figured all of that out we hand the rules that we followed and the laws that inspired those rules over to the judicial branch which is lawyers and shit. And then those guys say, hey, you did this right, or hey, you didn't do this right. And then we go back to the people can say, well, you know what? We, the jury, find the defendant guilty because we're a bunch of cracked out, lead poisoned sociopaths from the Midwest. Put him in the electric chair. And then, uh, and then things, the cycle continues again. It goes in a little spiral, whomp, like that. And then all the way back up to the top because that's where the Constitution starts. It's one of those little balls. No, when we were a little kid, and the thing would go like kick, 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 kick. That is how law works. Um, the sovereign citizen people, and uh, to a lesser extent, a lot of people, and actually, to in general, they they don't understand that there's differences. This you don't really get to vote on the actual laws or the actual rules that these agencies operate under. Because first off, it would be fucking impossible to get it all together. You basically give them the warrant to do it via your representative because it would be impossible to do all this shit. Are there issues with the representatives? Yes. But like st what, I'm, what I'm saying still stands. These guys just decide to fucking interpret shit all kinds of crazy. And so they, they like I have seen these guys get fucked up because they're like, you can't detain me because there's no law that says you can detain me right because like there isn't a law that says police are specifically says police are permitted to like detain you or whatever but it's actually just part of the operational mandate of like a police agency or like the tax court you know it's like it says that the congress can like levy taxes and stuff, but it does not say that the IRS has the authority in the constitution to tax me specifically. And so like these guys just go off fucking on crazy bullshit and it's, it's awesome. This might actually be something that only my dork ass is fucking remotely fascinated by. Sorry for anyone else. That's just like, could you not? <laughs> How are we doing? We're done. Yeah. Okay. You guys are not particularly interested in this one. <laughs> But we got some other other stuff. So I just kind of want to explain the background of it, if anything. My international diplomatic traveler permit. This is fucking awesome. These guys uh, issue themselves their own IDs. <laughs> it's kind of cool because it's like, if you know enough about like governmental organizations and stuff and like why stuff gets put down on these... It, it, it's hard to explain, but this is kind of like an AI 
it's like the same vibe. You're like, what in the fuck was it deciding to do and why? Because it's like almost makes sense. Uh, I, I would bet you five bucks. This QR code probably goes to this guy's like personal website. And this, this barcode looks like it probably doesn't do anything. Diplomatic operations specialist title in lowercase. This is just fucking amazing. Uh, it, it, awesome. <laughs> Tyler, you don't really need to break down the fucking sob sit memes this hard. It, they've owned themselves already. You don't need to keep going. The airport policy officer. I love the... F Dude, people that put just emojis inside bodies of text are wild. Like, not, not even like emotion emojis, just like articulation emojis. Like, I just painted my nails. Nails. <laughs> you know? That's a cool holo card. Can you pull out a real ID now? <laughs> yeah. The airport policy officer just took my world passport. Says he don't need no stinking warrant either. Yes, of course I asked him to write that down with his badge number. Said he's keeping it as evidence for the attorney general that may want to bring charges against me for not having federal identification. I smiled and replied, bring it on. He also lied and said I has warrants in four counties. <laughs> Elmeo, they're lucky it is about to expire in a few weeks anyway. <laughs> More than likely, those warrants are for unpaid taxes. You have to, if you don't pay your taxes, um, locally is actually usually where they'll find, usually local taxes will find you way before the federal government does um, for tax evasion and stuff. Even if it's unintentional tax evasion, you know, like it, it's, it's not tax evasion. It's just like failure to file, right? That grows into tax evasion. Like fucking, that's what we accidentally did. You just didn't file my taxes the right way. I thought I get, I'd like, you had to do it like six different ways. I did it five. <laughs> and then like, you just got hit with a fine. Like, oh, fuck me. And then you pay it. Um, if you keep avoiding that though, they will send you, they'll, they'll like, cancel your business license like well, all of our personal taxes are paid but they could cancel your business license blah 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 but they will send you eventually a notice to appear because it's gonna be like hey dipshit do you you're fucking not paying your fair share like you got to come in here and talk to us about it and if you fail to not if you don't heed a summons they will issue what they call a bench warrant for your detention and arrest right it doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to go to jail to jail, but they will take you to the prison and keep you there until the judge can see you and tell you like, Hey, dipshit, like you're in a lot of fucking trouble. So if you keep racking up fines and counties, if you don't pay speeding tickets, a lot of the things that are like libertarians and, uh, these soft sets were just advanced libertarians. Um, will do is like break traffic laws they'll break licensing requirements they'll ba break fucking uh a lot of standard safety feature or measures for people and like they get tickets for it or they get written up they won't pay their fucking debts they just accrue debt and don't pay it and all of those things can get you bench warrants to appear and so like they'll they won't know because sometimes they won't even fucking give their correct address, but the warrant is tied to your actual like information, information, uh, which is, I think another reason why these guys carry fake IDs around all the time. But when they fucking finally find you and a lot of times they'll take your picture and stuff or if your actual name just kind of pops in the system. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's just like, Hey, the sob sit check, like this person's insane. Then they're going to be like, Hey, you've actually got warrants in four counties. It's not like you killed somebody and they're on the lookout for you, know, their partner, but it's just a, a warrant, a warrant for your arrest. You can get a warrant for all kinds of shit. The, one of the most common ones in America, I think, I, I feel like I heard this. Don't quote me on it. One of the most commonly issued warrants in America that people get is for failure to pay child support, which should surprise nobody, but don't quote me on that. You'd have to look it up yourself. As a matter of fact, I will, I will give somebody kudos if they look that fact up for me because I don't look it up on my own. Uh, but I, I distinctly remember hearing that somewhere. But it might have been on something stupid like Dr. Phil. <laughs> oh, what the hell? Wordmagicbook.pdf 
Oh, no, I don't want to download it. I'm not opening something that's two, 2,000 kilobytes. Unintentional. Oh, yeah, so Tila Tequila. Do you guys remember a shot at love from VH1's series of, like, undateable, like, semi-celebrity sociopaths, like, make nine or ten people who also want to become the new versions of those sociopaths like pretend to love them the best shows ever according to my wife uh tila tequila was on one of these i think hold on, are you still awake damn she's smiling which one was tila tequila on first you don't know which one because oh, she was on shot of, that was shot of love was her right it, would you think it was the brett What's that first one? Rock of Love? Oh, you don't have to look it up. Okay, I'm just asking. One of her least favorite. If you ask her about New York, though, Sam knows everything. Um, anyway, she was on one of these things. I think it might have been Rock of Love. And um, it was just a, a psychotic dating show. And then she sort of stuck around for a while. She may or may not have done porn. Like half of the people that showed up on those things did porn. Um, but she came out as an absolute fucking psycho in the interim. And Hi, everyone. So, um, people don't believe that I am able to create energy balls and amongst lots of other things. And I'm not trying to show you my face right now because I just woke up. But anyways, um, yeah, so everybody's telling me that I should make a video or it didn't happen, blah, 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 because I can make, I can literally, um, manipulate the air somehow and create all types of energy forms and lasers and really cool stuff. Um, but today, I want to really? give you proof that I can do this, and it's pretty freaking awesome. Oh, all right, shit. so it's going to, first it's going to look a little bit Insanity. like smoke is starting to come. I have just been informed that Tila Tequila wasn't on those shows until like maybe later or something. She was famous from MySpace, which is wild, wild. It, it it is to the point now that like even knowing about MySpace, I feel like is becoming a meme. <laughs> like it really is a mark of like how old you are to have had a MySpace account, considering you can't even create them anymore. Like not for real. It's like the stupid music version of it. Come out very light smoke, and uh, why is she just off to the side? Swirl. Because she doesn't want to fucking catch herself on fire when she makes the fucking spirit ball. Okay. <laughs> By the way, if you're watching at home. Um, you need to give me the little, you, she's trying, she needs to summon the spirit. Ah, spirit ball. <laughs> Rolling as my hands go. Yeah, and get the hands up so we can summon the fucking spark energy, spark the spirits of, the of everyone on earth. So let me just focus here. Watch. Oh my God. Look in between my palms. You see how it's already coming out? See the lights? It's purple and green. Let's see, watch. I can even do it with this background so you can see that it is my energy. You see how I'm manipulating that? So fucking awesome. And I'm doing it very quickly these days, too. No. Can... So what's happening right now is just general compression artifaction or, or, or artifacts. If she had a better camera, this wouldn't do anything. And also just good miming. She's just mimed herself, like, which is dope. She, if you just pantomime this shape enough, the human mind's pattern recognition centers will try to tell you that there's a ball shape here. And it will try to imagine that ball shape there. What helps her along is that in the way that videos are compressed, right? It eliminates shots that don't exist so if everything is the same color right here it will try to maintain the same color and get rid of the information in the other frames that are different colors so like this all of this right here and stuff you know this is just not additional frames it's just they're there and they're displaying but only this information is changing so all of this can be completely compressed to shit because it's just this same color the whole time. That's how they save space. All the parts where she's moving 
because the compression is trying to maintain that it's doing little wiggles while it averages out the color to try to compensate for the fact that there's only movement there for a little bit against this otherwise clear space. If you use shitty or high, high, very lossy loss compression, um, you can do the same thing. It's neat. It, it's actually super fucking sick that that happens because it's like a new version of orbs that like exists in the internet era. If you guys don't know what orbs are, people think that they see ghosts when they go and take pictures in dusty houses because if you use an overmounted, uh, as in over the top of your lens mounted flash, the because like you see how this shadow is going on my face when it's like this and the flash is here, all of this area gets illuminated directly right back at you. That's all of the air gets hit with light. You don't think of air as being able to get hit with light, but it does. And some of the air it passes through and every little bit of dust and fog and like any sort of differential in the air pressure um, or, or, or presence of motes in the air will get picked up and it creates orbs. Uh, that are just reflecting. It's a small, little, tiny, little bit of light, but because it's bright white light, that is 15 times the fucking intensity of what the camera's probably set up to be exposed to, it will create a gigantic fucking pinhole um, of overexposure in the photograph, which they descend, decide to then um, decide are, are, are ghosts because the halo that forms around it is kind of like... Ooh, it's very cool. It reminds people of like heaven and death and because it's just the same thing that happens on like when you get like sun dogs or whatever the fuck it's called, you know, haze. It's just the, the presence of haze and clouds, but your brain puts it together. is like, that must be my dad, grandmother. It must be my dad, grandmother. It's kind of neat, right? When you figure out how the fuck this shit happens. By the way, I have a sad story. I, I, th I was doing... I still feel bad about this. It kills me to this day. When I was doing photojournalism, I had to go do a story. There was a benzene spill because I lived in oil country into the reservoir. And I had to go to the water treatment plant for Williston, North Dakota and cover like the insides of it. I did like pictures and shit to kind of basically put people's minds at rest that we were not all going to get benzene poisoning. We still could have all gotten benzene poisoning, but thankfully it was just too far up river. But the water facility, water treatment facility was really well run and like maintained and stuff. Huge, gigantic. The biggest building in Williston by far. Uh, one of the guys that ran it deeply believed in orbs. He like saw my cameras and stuff. He's like, you ever try to go ghost hunting? I got all kinds of blah, 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 blah. And he was talking about orbs and stuff. And then the dude that led me on the tour with him was like, yeah, man. Like, oh, dude, that shit kind of scares me and stuff. I was like, oh, you don't have to. That's not real. Like, it's not that... The, the way like if I put this flash I have the flash like on my camera and I take a picture the flash just reflects dust back that's how orbs are made like you if you just kick dust up anywhere and shoot an over camera mounted flash at it it will create orbs unless you're just taking a picture and it's so bright that it doesn't overexpose if it's the flash is as bright as the daylight is you'll just see pictures of dust and he was like, oh, and I was like, yeah, this shit, that's fake. But like, you know, people believe it. And I turned around and the dude was right behind me that told me about it before. And he went like, hmm, and left. I was like, oh, no, I took his soul. I took his soul. I felt so bad, man. That poor fucking guy. City slicker don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He don't talk like that. Either. He don't know anything about nothing. Dude, Tila Tequila is just such a weird looking lady. She's so strange. Such a such a such a sideways built individual. God bless her. I don't know what the fuck she's up now. I think she's like I think she came out as hyper MAGA. If I remember correctly, that's like the last I heard of her. If she was like super MAGA. I think she's actually really racist too. Um hold on. Look, don't don't quote me on that. Tila Tequila racist. That's racist. 15 celebrities who crossed the line. BET. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, fair enough. Uh, BET.com describes Tila Tequila as an overt racist and self avowed member of the neo Nazi party. <laughs> party. <laughs> 
Though in 2015, she claimed to not be a racist nor anti-Semitic and absolutely not 100% a Nazi supporter. This year, she tweeted, please, what does it say? What does it say? Oh, my God. I mean... Oh, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> the original Kanye West, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, you know, like, it's wild that these days, you know, you hear people get called Nazi over all... When I say that Fosh says Nazi way too regularly about people that probably aren't Nazis. It is because I'm probably just a little bit older than him. And I remember when people used to just come out as Nazis and dress up as them and do fucking Roman salutes. It seemed so unreal. When I said it, I was like, well, maybe she's not a racist. Like I, I could be misremembered. I wouldn't want to slander her. <laughs> fucking Hitler salute and a goddamn Nazi fucking thirst trap. Oh my god, dude. The 2000s were insane. MySpace celebrity is just crazy to look back on. What else do we got down here? <laughs> step by step instructions on how to fill out the W 4 so that no taxes be taken out of your check. He also showed his check stub at the end with 100% of his earnings. Have at it. This is gnarly, dude. This has to just be a fucking op. <laughs> I just love this though. <clears throat> Step five, sign here. Just being the IRS guy that gets one of these, there has to be a dude that it gets sent to where like they're opening them, you know? And then you start, you just like look at the bottom, it says this, and it's just like, Phil, <laughs> we got one for you. This says, over the top of it, it, the entire sign here box is full of text if you're just listening. And above it is written in all caps in a different pen in like a, in a red Sharpie marker, non-resident alien American national, which is, which is first off gobbledygook. But if you try to get like down to this other saying, I, I don't live here. An alien is a non-member of your, uh, of your area. You know what I mean? Wherever you're from. So like in this case, the context is America. So I'm, but I'm an American national, but I'm an alien in America. <laughs> an alien in America is the Kanye West album that hasn't dropped yet. That's going to change all your minds, by the way. Floyd Pleasant Tarvin, the fourth copyright. An official copy. This is a registered copyright. A little, a little fucking circle around it. Authorized representative without prejudice. Texas bus eight com code. Uh, I can't remember what that fucking symbol means. One point three oh eight. All rights reserved. Um, without prejudice is awesome because so many people don't even know what that term means. Um, legally, hold on. But I want to see Texas. Business, I'm guessing text bus eight com dot code. Can't do the jurisprudence sign. I don't know what the fuck it means. 1038. Texas Business and Commerce. Okay. I'm excited. Okay, so this is this is what he wrote down. Texas Business and Commerce Code, bus and com. What is this symbol? I need to know. I need to know what this symbol's called. I have to under I have to know. Section sign. There you go. The section sign is a typographical character for referencing individually numbered sections of a document is frequently used when signing sections. I did not know that. That's how you know I didn't get an advanced degree. When you get an advanced degree, you will 100% know where the fuck find that on a on a keyboard. A party that ex Okay, so this is what this says by the way. 
Um, it's uh, performance or acceptance under reservation of rights. A, a party that with explicit reservation of rights performs or promises performance or assents to performance in a manner demanded or offered by the other party does not thereby prejudice the rights reserves. Reserved. Such words as without prejudice, under protest, or the like are sufficient. B. Subsection A does not apply to an accord and satisfaction. This is highly specific, I think, probably to Texas stuff. So. Do, 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 do. Let me see if I can break this down. So basically, if you say I have, I'm doing, I'm exclusively reserving rights, rights reserved, right? And I'm doing a performance. I'm doing something that means that while you, when you do it, the other party does not prejudice the right. So basically, if I ask you to do something and then you do it, right? And you say, I'm doing it all rights reserved, then you reserve the rights that might otherwise potentially be put at risk when you're doing it, you know? So like it, it, it's just, it's just isolating yourself from certain types of like liability from what I understand. Um, it, it seems pretty, this is like a, this is like a little goofy thing. This, this kind of shit is stuff that's chucked in there for like, this is lawyer, lawyer shit lawyer 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 shit to to settle an argument probably that comes up in a certain course of duties deep in shit right this is the kind of stuff you see it's like when you get into contract law and stuff you see stuff like this pop up and it's it's definitely outside of my wheelhouse but basically if it's like the other times i've seen this the prejudice in this case is It's prejudicing. It's such a good fucking word. Um, basically, it's putting stuff at risk. Let me just let me even just look up the word just in case, because it'll the the actual thing. All right, preconceived opinion to do, uh, harm or injury. Yeah, yeah, that results or may result from some action or judgment. So, basically, still what I said. Yeah, cause harm to the rights. I don't know what in this specific case what it would be. It pro this is usually just like an addendum thing. Like, so basically when we put this into the contract law as just an ask, when people say like boilerplate, this is just one of those things that makes it like airtight. So there was at some point a bit of a loophole and this is the, this is the stitching over the top of it. So to say, um, and then these are just specific things in business business law is fucking miserable nightmare bullshit it is so f fucking hard to read it is the worst business lawyers are the most maladjusted like basement dwelling versions of lawyers you, you it's one of those things where you get paid a lot of money but you sit in a fucking box just checking up billable hours you see it a lot in bird law 100 percent, 100 percent. but this doesn't do anything um th this basically requires but the reason I'm expressing this, right? I'm stumbling. If you're a lawyer, shout out me being dumb. The reason this is important and why I'm bringing it up is because this doesn't apply without a pre-existing contract between two individuals, which to have that, you have to have co-assent. You, you can't have a contract exist without two people assenting to it and then agreeing to it generally. Like... Which is kind of like where you get to like accord and Senate satisfaction. More than likely an accord is, I don't know if it exists. This is state law, by the way. State law goes fucking crazy. It's written by the people in the states. And sometimes it travels cross-jurisdictionally into other states. And there's even like, you know, um, basic crosstalk between states. And sometimes there's not. And you'll see stuff. It, it's, you know, hey, my, hey, looked at me funny. Well, looking at me funny is, you know, wrong under Georgia law. Uh, in this case, an accord is probably like we came to an, like a, a like a you know a, a gentleman's agreement, a handshake kind of thing. Accord and satisfaction, you can't do the all rights reserved. In this case, it's like, hey man, all of my other shit, like I'm good, and you can't prejudice it. Can't you can't fuck up my rights by me going into this thing. When you say that in a contract, it's going to be relative to the things that are expressed in the 
contract, right? So like kind of like everything that's not probably talked about in in the due course of trying to establish what both parties want. I, that's me getting more complicated than I need. The thing you need to understand is what the sovereign citizens are doing is rules lawyering. So they just hear the word rights and more than likely also the word prejudice. And um, they just say those things. Uh, they just they just say them. So they think that just articulating this out and not knowing the relative parts, because this is when it's something this tiny and this is a subsection like all of this. So this is subsection 1.308. So this is the third hundred and eighth, 308th point or whatever in the this bigger one subsection. This is a page in a book book. You know what I mean? Maybe a series of books. And so uh, it doesn't apply in any way, shape, or form. Because it's just so fucking gnarly. They don't have a contract with you because you're talking to a cop or whatever. Or in this case, you're 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 filling out a form that doesn't have anything to do with contract law. And there's already laws stipulating what can and can't happen. But they just hear the word. And once they've heard the word, they freak out. If you see me... When you see me like pause a lot and I'm talking about stuff that like... Maybe it, it, I should hope it's like clear. I kind of have an understanding of it and like I can I can be conversational and I get like stuck up on wording. It's not because generally I'm having trouble articulating it. Like I can just say it in plain terms. This is the best way. Like I get, I, I understand what they're saying basically, but trying to like extrapolate it out kind of is difficult because you have to add words and then also just in certain legal contexts, they might be, finicky with certain definitions it just gets weird when you're trying to figure out what the fuck people are saying in different laws there's a reason you have to hire hire lawyers don't don't believe once it comes to fucking money time you know what you're doing um but when i'm trying to explain these things simplistically dumb fucks will hear a word and go for the most bad faith or for themselves selfish interpretation of it that they can. And so you really have to, it really is an aspect bird law. It's they, they bird law you. It's, oh, Mom, I don't know. You didn't say that earlier. So, uh, as bird law <laughs> and, and they freak out. And so like, uh, you see this in debates all the time. Um, when people are talking to each other and guys, like, Oh, so you agree with me. What, what, what you're doing is, um, uh, as, as far as bird law is concerned, I think we need to go back to subsection two and you just agreed with me, which means, I, uh, judgment in my favor. <laughs> it's like half the fucking, half the arguments I see online where people get into like law and lawyerly shit. It's just fucking Charlie screaming about fucking bird law. The sea cow, the manatee. Things get Miss Fennecke on Tyler's end. What does that mean? Based over Timler, I am hanging out. I just, I enjoy the, th- this is, unironically, I sit, if I wasn't talking to you guys, I sit up at night and I look shit like this up. I will get, I'll get it into my head and I'll be like, I really, is there a law about spittoons in Houston, Texas? I don't know. And I look them up. We have DP listeners from 2014 to 2016 in the chat. Who's DP? There's an insane Reddit post where some HOA got fined like $1.5 million for cutting down a rare tree in some dude's backyard. Oh, HOA, HOAs are insane. That should be a fucking, that, that could be a whole section. Previous part of code. I wonder what the previous part is. Prima facie evidence by third party documents. A document in due form purporting to be a bill of lading, lading policy or certificate of insurance, official waivers or inspectors document authorized prima facie evidence of its own authenticity and genuineness and of the facts stated in the document by the third party based it means the fucking we accept this document as being evidence in and of itself of what the document says. Oh shit. That's a logical fallacy. That's circular logic. The document's true because what it says on the document is in the document. <gasps> can, it can never be applied. <laughs> It's just we decide <laughs> we decided to move to the next part of the conversation. It's so crazy. Drunken peasants. Um, I never listened to drunken peasants. I think I heard Vosh on there like one or two times, and I was like, mm, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, I'm so sorry. I thought soft set shit would be fun. 
more fun for you guys than it is for me. Um, I still enjoyed myself. I have no idea what I'm going to be talking about tomorrow at all. At all. I have nothing planned. Is anything crazy going on? Are there fucking cool psychotic people doing dumb shit? Do you guys know? I need I need challenges. I need people to come fight me on the pod. I need I need debates or something. <laughs> to fill out this time slot. If you want to get wild, my state has some crazy tree laws. We, 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 we can't get down into like crazy law territory. I'll definitely overstep my bounds. I don't want to end up in a legal eagle episode. This YouTuber, <laughs> this live streamer decided he wanted to talk about bird law on camera. What he didn't know is that in Kentucky specifically, he was setting himself up for a real timber of a time. <laughs> Hello, legal eagles. <laughs> Court is now in session. I love that fuck. I love that fucking uh, show. Do another tier list. A tier list would be pretty solid. Draw anime John Brown. Ooh, maybe we can do that tomorrow. Tomorrow or tomorrow or Thursday. We'll figure it out. We should, you should get okay. If you guys want to help select what we're going to be doing in this, by the way, we'll get the get the end of it. Get the end of it. What? we are doing in the next couple days i think i do want to do this is um maybe if i can take like a fucking i'll do it to a dono stream so i see if i can't like make a little bit of money off of it and do like as quick as i can 15 minutes you call it me trying to draw random political figures as one piece characters if you guys would be interested in that hop into the discord the discord invite code is in the episode description as per always join the discord go to content suggestions or tyler you must see this and put in uh if you would like to see yes or no would you like to see a uh, at least maybe an hour maybe two hours of trying to speed draw various political figures as one piece characters or just maybe just generally as anime characters in general or like from various other animes but i think it would just be easiest to do one piece because it's most it's easy because it's cartoony and more recognizable um another thing i keep forgetting to ask about this if you if you have any any uh expertise in animation i'm gonna bring this up again real quick um I am trying to... I was going to do it myself, but I feel like it's too much fucking work. I just want to animate, and I can give you the... I have the Krita file still blown apart. So, like, all of these little chunks, I'm... Sh I'm I don't know why I'm touching it. Miss Fennec over there in the bottom left corner. I'm trying to make it so that she just makes... Like, looks a little bit alive. You know? Um, just, like, like her ears would move, and maybe, like, the, the computer's, like screen would be kind of like glowing just a little bit not like super obvious and then like this little bit of fog that's in front of the projector might move and like the little projector lines could like wiggle or something and then this square that's behind it uh behind the everybody's text could maybe like over like a really long period of time not like highly distracting or anything uh, I'm trying to add some fun animations to it, and I feel like it's a good way to give back to the community. It would have to be in the style. Like, it couldn't be, like, your own style. I, I'd want it to just be the thing that I drew, but, like, with a little bit of extra motion in it, which I don't think would be too difficult. Not, And, you know, I would pay you for it. Um, so if that's something, if you're an animator out there and you want to try to make a little bit of money and you think you can do this, uh, don't necessarily just fucking do it. Uh, tell me how you would do it and like your ideas for it and um, if there's multiple people I might find other projects for you to do I want to have a thing where this little underneath where you guys are talking the little um, the little screens going up in that black area to have like a little west slug that just pops up and goes like blah when I get a uh, I literally like, blah whenever I get a donation or something because I was thinking my new boot goofing's fun and whatever but it does it if I ever get fucking bombed, shout out our friend. Uh, number goes up, members go up. If I ever get bombed like that again, that animation took too long to play, and the numbers just go, bleh, bleh, you know. And so I think it's just a funny little that 
that. Like a little a little slug that pops up and says that. And then maybe if there's like a new member, a slug slides down like to the left of where you guys go and it's like new member. <laughs> Something like that. I think those could be fun. I don't have a shitload of money to pay um, so don't like get freaked out like you're gonna make a billion goddamn dollars or something but anybody that's interested in the project or or one of those projects and you have an idea for how you would knock it out it would have to be like full color but not like a fuckload of frames you know you would have to do it but i would give you credit you know hey this guy animated this gal this nb individual this 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 uh fella this folks they made this. I would just permanently keep that in the uh, credits so that people knew that you did it, um, which would probably be pretty cool as it gets big. And then I'll give you like money. I don't know, a dollar per frame, <laughs> two dollars per frame. <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, I don't know how to price animation. I, I find it extremely valuable. I'm also extremely poor, uh, but I'm not going to go to AI to do it. <laughs> um, and I'm also not going to do it if I can't like afford it. But I, I feel like hyper simplistic, cartoony. Think of like the, the everything I want is like Hollow Knighty. You know what I mean? Like Hollow Knight. So like just a little cute, hyper simplistic, three or four colors. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I think it could be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I wanted to animate that two little slug dudes and also i am going to be doing uh on the goodbye screen that you guys are going to be seeing here too soon i'm going to be changing that up too because i like miss fennec but i think i wish she was in a better mood uh that that drawing i feel like has run its course and um i'm going to be doing some other ones i think for this i should be like this anyway um for this i'm going to be changing some stuff up i don't know i i'm i'm kind of good on space here but maybe like just a different one for these screens or i don't know something that would work for everything i'll figure it out i'll figure it out uh would be pretty cool either way just a little slug yeah <laughs> i love that i love this sound yeah <laughs> it's such that's just such a fucking like a, a middle enemy in a hollow knight game type noise you just put the clip I made of Alex Jones saying, I indict you as a slug. <laughs> I, indict, I indict you as a slug. Should I do a little animating in Krita? And I literally want to make a lo-fi loop style thing soon. Hey, this would be the place to practice. You could make a little bit of cash off it. Just be upfront with how much you are willing to pay. Then it will be simple to scale off that. Um, I would say $50 would probably be the top. But also, I don't want that much. Like, it doesn't have to be, you know. Like, if I just like, if I just show you like how much time for like the thing that was going down the side, it would be like. Hold on, this that, kind of up and down, and then the one at the bottom would just be like. Hold on, bam, bam. You know what I mean? Not even. I think that's not even like a whole second. So like. Or maybe it's like two seconds ish. So like, yeah, I, I don't know. Would two dollars a frame be okay? And try to keep it like not quite like twenty four frames. You know, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think is good? As a matter of fact, tell me, because I don't want to fucking. I don't want to like pre freak people out about it, or like try to like down dog motherfuckers before they even get to it. Fifty dollars isn't some furry foot stuff, is it? And that number is in my mind now. <laughs> it is a Miss Fennec drawing. Uh, it's relatively short on ones. See, I don't know what any of that stuff is. I, I like animation. I appreciate it. I know how it's made, but all of the technical terms terms completely escape me. But in any case. Um, with all that said, if you are interested in trying to animate any of that stuff, I'm definitely gonna go to my community first. Uh because I like you guys. And sometimes you give me money and sometimes I'll, I'll fucking pay it back. You know what I mean? Um, if you're interested in that, if you guys want to help me try to figure out how to price it fairly um, and figure out how to get this stuff kind of done. And even if some of you want to work together, you know, if you're like cool splitting it and somebody wants to do however you would like to divide the labor, if you guys want to talk about it, please go to the creative corner. Um, 
the creative corner section of the discord and um, continue the conversation there. I might just get offline and then I'll create a thread in there and um, we can move on from that point. So yeah, like I want, I want this whole thing to feel like really alive and fun as we go forward because like, like I, I know I make fun of people. Every time I make fun of people for a bunch of times, I always am just like, I've got to fucking like create some positivity and shit. Like, you know, balance, balance my scales before the fucking alligator God at the gates of hell eats my heart kind of vibe. But with all that said, you can find more about that out about that in our discord diggity dog discord. My name is Tyler Bell. You have been listening to Westside Tyler live. I will be back tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. More than likely, I'm going to be a little bit late because I stayed over 20 minutes tonight and I'm going to Jimler. It's going to be Jimler stuff. I'll probably still show up on time. Every time I intend to show up late or think I will, I'm on time. And every time I think I'm going to be on time, I show up late. So that is what life is. But with all that said, yeah, tomorrow might be One Piece Doodles. Uh, that should be pretty fun. And also, I'll more than likely drum something up. I think I've got a few things sitting in the uh, chamber that I've just got to double check to see if they'll be interesting. But we kind of burned through comment, uh, burned through content this week. Just a lot of long videos that I had no patience for and short videos that I fucking talked about extensively. As per always, though, I'll be here more than likely not paying attention to any of the subjects I've set up and just talking with you guys. So if you enjoy that sort of thing, I hope to see you when the sun goes down tomorrow, the tunes come back, and we all sit down for another trip to the west side. But, oof, with all that said, until next time, as always, stay safe out there.